Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. As you can see, today oh. we're joined by a guest, Leon Shepard, Ein Fang Shepard, which is a yep. cool pseudonym, in my <laughs> um, from Game Over Yeah, which is a podcast uh, by a lot of Southern softies in, uh, in hey, England. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one of you, and unfortunately there's only two of us today, so... And, uh, yeah, so Steve couldn't make it today again today, but um, he said, Leon, do you want to give us a rundown on what your show is and uh, and what you guys do? Well, I'm, I must admit, we're very, very similar to uh, your uh, amazing, amazing uh, uh, cast <laughs> on, on Twitch. Yeah, Resonance Arcade. But yeah, we are uh, Game Over Year, and uh, we've been going for, oh God, I think it's been nearly three years now right. on that kind of level. And uh, we started off as a sort of an audio uh, kind of podcast only, but uh, nowadays uh, we're on Twitch. Uh, we do it fortnightly on a Monday. Uh, our next one is actually on the 2nd of May. So uh, go to our Twitch, uh, which is uh, Go Over Year and uh, you can uh, come and join us for some more gaming talk fun. <laughs> and you also do um, pod, um, streams as well, don't you? And We uh, do YouTubers. some live streams as well. Uh, I was just on last night, actually, uh, but we will probably get into that a little bit later. <laughs> fair, enough, fair enough. Yeah, so uh, we, we used to do streams ourselves, but we don't that much these days. We used to mainly do co-op focused stuff, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really difficult. You get to a certain age, it's really difficult to... Um, to, to arrange everybody with free oh, time yeah. at the same time so we generally do LAN parties and play games together and at that point it's like I just want to play games, I don't want to stream so we don't yeah. end up streaming at all these days <laughs> I, we'll, I know exactly what you mean <laughs> <laughs> So yes, traditionally we start off with uh, talking about the games that we have played um, over the last week so I, I'll, I'll start off this week I usually let uh, let other people start but I'll uh, I'll talk about a few that I've or oh, one in particular that I've been playing quite a lot of okay. um, been playing a game called Satellite Rain that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago I started playing no it was last week or the last time we were on at least and I started playing it and I was confused to what it was I had no idea what I was playing the, the, there was very little tutorial in it and I was just like what the hell is going on here it's a spiritual mm -hmm. successor to um, Syndicate Wars oh, if you remember okay. that from the 90s and it's um, essentially it's an isometric kind of top down game and the, the satellite rain part of it is that you are actually observing your agents uh, you control four agents from a satellite and uh, let me just put some footage on it's essentially a cyber kind of what's what's it called cyberpunk oh don't mm. want that in front do I? there we go <laughs> um so it's like a cyberpunk game where you control four different types of agents so you've got a soldier uh infiltrator oh, okay. a hacker and a support guy so they're all obviously got their own skills and they've got their own upgrade trees as well but they um if you see on the bottom there's all these different icons and there's about a billion shortcut keys in it and when i looked normally as a pc gamer you open up the um control settings and you look at all of the bindings and you just rebind to, you know to for your own configuration but in this instance it was just so overwhelming to start off with i just left everything as a default and just jumped into it and just got completely lost because i couldn't control anything i didn't know what the hell was going on anywhere um anyway so essentially the the concept is is you have to you, there's there's four different areas in the world with a fifth final area and each one of them get obviously gets progressively harder but each one of them essentially has different factions in them and you have to go and reach a destination in each of these areas or rather there's a number of different tasks in each area or there's a number of different buildings or, or setups so one place there might be a prison which i think is actually what i'm in right here and you have to you know hack things hack um, cameras so they don't see it's a standard kind of you know computer game fair these days um you you hack doors to open them you can also the soldier can also hardwire things so once you've hacked something and opened a door for example you can get the soldier to hardwire it so the door stays open whereas when the hacker hacks something depending on his hack skill he uh the the like cameras will only stay off for a certain amount of time but if you hardwire them then they stay off permanently but you have to control basically like at the moment all of my agents are in the same place but quite a lot of the time you've got agents all over the map all over the, each of the areas trying to figure out the best way to attack a particular problem it's almost like a puzzle game but mm. 
but it's action based um while you're walking around outside of restricted areas for example you can uh, you can go and see uh, you can go and bribe people and you can find researchers to do all your research etc and uh, there's there's a lot of elements to it it's quite complicated but also quite simple in other ways um but i've completed it now good game thoroughly enjoyed it i think i just released a load of prisoners there so they're going to annoy a load of mechs and, <laughs> and guys um and it's 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 basically it's right up my street but i just think it could have maybe been implemented a little bit better it's quite difficult to remember all of the bindings and to to kind of figure out what each agent is doing like as soon as you kick something kicks off and you uh you get start getting attacked it's really difficult to find to figure out who's getting hit or how much health they've got left even though there's bars at the bottom because there's so much going on on the screen it's difficult to to ascertain what it is and and there's lots of different types of weapons and it's had tons of different skills and there's drones involved and you know it's it's mental but yeah i i like it and I'm so, um, so what's like the uh, like the level progression like on the characters is there sort of like are you building up their stats as you're going along kind of thing or so you open there's little arrows at the bottom if you can mm -hmm. see that they're um flashing upwards that means i've got an upgrade yeah. point to spend so uh, okay everything you do in the game i don't i don't really know I, I never figured it out i don't really know how how much you have to do to get a level but you basically mm -hmm. get points and you can put them into different areas so the soldier for example and um, the skills he's got oh, there's loads of other things actually i just remembered um the skills he's got are related to it said he's got the hardwire skill so you can upgrade mm -hmm. that to level four the first one costs one point second cost two points four points eight points or whatever um as it as it goes up and then the um the hacker's got the hacker skill but no one else has those skills either so the uh, infiltrator by default for example the infiltrator can he can use zip wires and zip into places and he also has a cloak Oh, but cool! On top of that, all of all of your agents can be augmented as well. So you can have um, at the moment all my agents have iron lung, so I can walk through poison clouds. Um, but you can change so each of your body parts has a different augmentation. Again, this is just kind of standard cyberpunk type stuff these days. Yeah. Um, but each one of them, uh, it, you can have, for example, your infiltrator doesn't need. Um, enhanced cybernetic legs because he can already jump into high vents whereas your other agents would need l those legs to jump into the high vents you get to a point where you kind of you know you've, you've figured out that your soldier needs to be the tank so he needs to absorb all of the damage from everybody yeah um and he's also better with heavy weapons he doesn't get any heavy weapon penalties if you're running around it's really really in depth <laughs> um, yeah no it sounds it and one other thing as well the, the support agent is the only one who can you might have saw right at the beginning of the video he had a like a corner a, a, a spherical vision that shows you where everywhere's everything's wired it shows you all of the um, enemies and it also shows you where the researchers are and it scans everybody the more you upgrade that skill the bigger the cone becomes and also the more um the more details you get when you scan people so you can also one of the things in the game is you can clone everybody so one of the main principles is you everyone that's walking around in the world including soldiers and all of the um all of the public that are walking around mm. outside of the restricted areas they can all be cloned uh, for use by your agents so a like a, a elite soldier might have plus 50 health and plus 20 speed or something like that and if you clone him you can then reuse his clone as one of your agents this is the bit that I didn't understand to start off with, and it's quite hard to describe as well. So <laughs> once you've once you've cloned them, then you get their stats, but the original clone, their stats degrade, so you can't keep applying it. So you have to keep cloning people in order to get better and better stats. It's not something I use that much. I have to be honest. It's one of those things that I use a few times and didn't really see that much benefit in it. But it's a cool feature, nonetheless. So mm. once you've so once you've cloned a soldier, do they? then take are they like a fifth person on your squad is that how it works so you, or? you have to uh, the hacker has an ability to uh, hijack people and hijack um mechs and things like that you you have the option then to either use them in your squad um so again depending on your hijack level if you've got hijack level five you can have i think up to five people i think that's how it works hijacked at any moment but that means that the the 
<clears throat> the agent's stamina doesn't regenerate as uh, as quickly as it would normally and you have five extra guns on your side so if you want to go all guns blazing you hijack mm. five people with good weapons so five heavy weapon guys and just fly into a, a place shoot all the cameras out take out all the mechs but then you're you just get more and more and more enemies coming towards you and you get to a point where it's just like you know gta style where you you've just got so many you've got the army after you it's like it's yeah. basically like that um <clears throat> um so I said on top of that, you've got gear as well and augmentations, which you can see on here. I'm actually upgrading the skill trees now. So you've mm. got, everyone's got health weapon specialist pack mule. Pack mule allows you to carry more gear. Um, but the soldier here, he's got hardening, rage, draw fire, hard wiring, and explosives expert, whereas none of the other agents have that. And all of them have their own set, essentially. Um, the oh, weapons, okay. again... Soldier can hold more weapons at the same time. It's it's really detailed, and it's the kind of game that I really enjoy. And as soon as I got over the initial learning curve, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually wish there was a lot more to it than there is, but I completed it in maybe 25, 30 hours, I think. Um, okay. I'm, and what did you sort of pick that up at? Like, how, how much did you pay for it? God, I got it a while back. Um, I don't know. It's on Steam. It was, it was fairly cheap, I, th I think. That's all right. I mean, like, 25 hours, you know, like, I, I mean, my, my rule always is sort of like, you know, if I get a pound an hour, that's good, it's good, good money, you know. <laughs> like, well, it, yeah. yeah, so, but if I, you know, if, if there's some obviously exceed that, I mean, like, Destiny, for example, I put, like, over 400 hours into that game, so, like, that paid for itself ridiculously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but, I've... I, I keep bringing up Fallout 4. I spent so many hours in Fallout 4, but I've not actually touched the main quest yet. 120 hours I've played that game for, and I haven't wow. even touched the main quest. It's like that's crazy, it's man. <laughs> I haven't went back to it yet either. So, I think I got this on a bundle, on a humble bundle. Um, it's actually 22.99 on Steam, which is quite a lot. I, thought, I didn't think Ooh, it was that much. That um, is pricey. But I mean, as I said, there's a lot there. Mm. It's it's given me. I think it's given me around 30 hours. I didn't actually look at my final gameplay. But there's a lot to it as well. There's a lot of different ways you can play it. It's it's like a Deus Ex with four agents, but top down, you know? That, that's probably mm. the amount of the depth I can give you. But there's loads of ways to, to play it. And you can just stealth it all the way through the game, or you can just guns blaze it all the way through. And mm. There's quite a lot of peril as well. A lot of, a lot of the things is you have to rescue somebody or, t or take someone into a secure area and but they essentially every mission is the same just in different places you have to essentially get from some somewhere in the world to a door in the inside a um a secure area there might mm. be three doors that you have to go to and then go and find a uh i don't know a chest somewhere but that's it that's essentially the core gameplay oh okay so that's the disappointing part there could have been a bit more thought put into the what do you mm. do when you actually get to your objective but there isn't oh. it's just open this door that's it get out uh, <laughs> you know? nah, fair enough yeah anyway so yes um that's uh that's the first game i played does any anybody have another game they want to talk about um you can go first if you want as the guest leon Oh yeah, no, I can I can jump in. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I've been playing. Uh, I mean, I think the first game I'll talk about is FTL. Uh, that's faster than light. Uh, I'm sure many people are familiar with it. It's been out for a little bit now, um, but for those who are not so familiar, it's a top-down spaceship simulator uh, created by uh, indie developer Subnet Games, and um, you're kind of basically in, in control of a, a spacecraft that belongs to the Galactic Federation. Um, which is on the verge of collapse um, and uh, you're basically losing the war against the rebels and uh, you're, uh, you're basically the core gameplay is that you're trying to get to the get to the, the sort of the main goal uh, which is the federation headquarters um where there's sort of this big ridiculous mothership kind of thing which is going to destroy um sort of the main base and uh, you've got to take it out and for ages for absolutely ages i've been getting my ass handed to on this game <laughs> managed to do it, yeah. I, we actually talked about this quite a lot when it came out well actually quite a while after it came out but mm. i've played it to death as well i have put a lot of time into this game 
Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I might it's notoriously difficult, my... isn't it? It is, yes. So have you have you completed it? Well, I, I've I've managed to do it on easy, and that's yeah. like cheating. And like now I'm like, because the thing is, is that I was doing it on normal for so long, and just sort of like I got to like the the last boss like two two times, and like literally just got destroyed every time I got there. The, the, the problem I have with this game, I love it. It's a brilliant game. Mm. The problem I have with it is a lot of it relies on luck. Oh yeah, not for just, sure. Not just the random encounters. I'm talking about the luck of. The the sometimes I've played the entire game and only ever had two members of staff on my ship and I've not been yeah. able to get any more. Um, other times I've played it and, and I've had tons of scrap. Other times I've played it and I've got hardly anything for, for you know. Mm. It's it's really there's no surefire way to say right. I need more scrap. Let's do this to get more scrap. You know. It, do you know it's it's difficult yeah. to. So the it only is. way I've completed it is by a scrap cheat, and I'm sorry. But I, I just give myself infinite scrap and then everything else I'll let randomise, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough, man. Fair enough. But yeah, and no, I, I I have legit done it on easy now and I was like I was like fist pumping in the air like going, <laughs> Yes, finally. And Find uh, the boss though, how hard is that? Oh god, it is really hard, and that's why I'm like I'm going like I know in normal it's going to be even harder and that kind of because of the missile uh, volley volley. Yeah volleys there we go yeah that are coming over it's just ridiculous on how much how much uh sort of you're getting destroyed towards the end yeah. um but uh, i mean uh, i just want to kind of say that i am going to continue the series i will because i was like you know what i'm fed up of just putting up videos of m my ass getting handed to <laughs> on that game i'm going to do some more research on easy and then go back up to normal and continue the series and sort of try and attempt a week and see if I can actually finally beat it on normal. <laughs> well, if you've completed it on no uh, on easy, then you should have opened a ship, shouldn't you? Another ship. Um, not for the because I'm I was using the Kestrel and uh, I need another unlock as well to be able. To, I need two unlocks to be able to unlock uh, another ship. So I managed to unlock a, a bigger ship with. It's got quite a few entry um, entryways into mm -hmm. the ship as well i can't remember what it's called now but yeah it's a the thing i really like about this game is that it's it's almost you know it's, it's just basically a simulator a, a starship enterprise <laughs> simulator you know yeah. even things like the being able to um depressurize certain areas of the ship mm. and you know being able to like put fire out by depressurizing parts of the ship i, I love that kind of that element of it it's it's quite cool well, I mean, like, there's the advanced edition in some sense nowadays where you've got your your extra, there's extra systems. So there's like mind control. Um, yeah. So, yeah, which is, which is pretty interesting in itself. Just be able to, you know, like uh, suddenly turn one of your enemies into your, uh, an ally for a little bit. But then, you know, obviously that can be worked on you as well, which is mm -hmm. a pain in the ass. Um, I'm just trying to think what else is there now. I think there's like a, a hacking. There's hacking actually, yeah, where you can kind of hack the other person's yeah, system. Yeah, you send a probe don't you and it yeah. attaches to the ship and you can control or you can stop their uh, stop their weapons mm. so uh, i mean yeah I, I i was obviously trying to do it on just the normal edition in for at first so i don't know i think on the series i'll continue with just the normal edition and then maybe maybe if it you know like it doesn't take too long <laughs> then i might do the advanced edition <laughs> yeah good luck with that <laughs> doing it and not me. <laughs> One thing I did find is though, the more crew member, there's two main elements to the game to to win. The more crew members you get, the better, mm -hmm. and the better your shields are, the better. So the more hits your shields can take. Definitely. I mean, like, but like on you, you definitely want to be getting that your engine up just so that you can evade more attacks. Um, and uh, if you can make sure that the guy who is on your engine and who's on your navigation uh, to make sure that they're like fully leveled up as well, mm -hmm. because you get ridiculous evade boosts. I mean, you can get up to, so you can get over fifty percent evade boosts kind of thing on that level, which is really helpful sort of later on because then you know you can miss a lot more of those missiles at the end. Way. you just accepted someone's <clears throat> offer i can't believe you just accepted somebody saying um oh i'll give you some weapons if you stop shooting me you get better <laughs> stuff if you kill them 
but usually there's more risk isn't there yeah there is there is you've got you've got to pick you've got to pick what you want you know like because yeah. there is like there's those ones where they're like oh yeah send a crew member over to be able to you know help out power this fire and mm. it's just like nope not doing that because i'll just lose a crew member no i've done that before though and you end up getting something for it or yeah, it does you it, but the thing is is that most of the time you get absolutely ruined by it <laughs> it's annoying as well sometimes they just decide to go as well your crew members like you'll you'll come across a random encounter you won't yeah. even make a decision but they'll either die or they'll okay. or, or they'll just decide to go off your ship and it's like oh god yeah oh, god, <laughs> It's a very unforgiving game, FTL, and oh. uh, yeah, definitely has caused uh, a lot of frustration. But you know, I, I've, I've got a feeling I'm going to get there now for normal. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely worth playing. And if anybody watching hasn't played it and you, you enjoy strategy and you enjoy a very difficult challenge, go for it because it's it's definitely worth it. Mm. So, Sam, speaking of difficult challenges. Uh, <laughs> hey. The other day I just finished Dark Souls 3 uh, oh. and uh, so I'm guessing everybody's pretty familiar with the series but so like obviously Dark Souls 3 is the third installment but it's more like the true sequel to Dark Souls 1 in that it has open um, callbacks to characters and a lot of the lore of that game is it's it feels like a direct sequel whereas Dark Souls 2 felt like they were kind of referencing some stuff but in a sort of uh, it's not really the same world. It's or it's the same world, but like thousands of years in the future. So nothing's really the same as it was anyway. Kind of deal. Whereas this one feels a bit more like it's tied into it all. Um, and it's interesting because everyone knows that the Dark Souls series is defined as being like a difficult RPG dungeon crawler hack and slash experience. And this one starts out not that difficult. And I know you could say that's because I've played them all. So I know what to expect and you go in and you're like, right, I know how to do the parry, I know how to get the backstabs, I know how to like avoid these statistical um, build-ups of poison or whatever else that I wasn't used to when I first started playing them. But this game takes a turn like about two-thirds of the way through when it's just like, no, every enemy is now going to two-hit you to death <laughs> and they're all going to mob you and all the bosses are ridiculously hard and fuck you. Because it's like it's almost like lures you into a, a false sense of security going, it's okay, this isn't that bad, this Dark Souls is quite cool. And then you're just like, no, fuck you, we're not. We're going to absolutely <laughs> kill you over and over and over again. But uh, does it get frustrating? Yes. So incredibly frustrating. game in the ass then. It yeah, I, I've, never, it, I've never been like I've I've never wanted to get into that series because I just feel like that I I, I just couldn't keep up to it. I, I'd be like uh, I, I'd get so frustrated that I'd want to break my controller. <laughs> you do get frustrated, but there's a, there's an element of, of of balancing how you're like. I don't if it, it must be some somewhat intentional on their part, but how you put enough frustration in that you get like oh I'm frustrated, but you keep wanting to go back for more because. There is something immensely satisfying about like knowing why you're failing each time you're going, if I can just time that dodge, or if I can just like get my stamina back up and then block the attack, and if I can just like practice his moves and, and understand how to defeat this enemy, this boss or this scenario, then I can I can move forward and it's that like it's that drive to always keep moving forward that kinda of keeps you coming back. Even though it is frustrating, you wanna see it through. Like I've had sessions where I've been fighting with one boss over and over and over again and i just go right fuck this i'm like i'm turning it off and i'm going to come back to it tomorrow because i'm just getting angry and i'm starting to be sloppy that guy there right he just this is a youtube video um the, the guy there he just he got the enemy down the, the boss down to a sliver of health mm. and ran out of arrows <laughs> yeah like, if, if, oh i've had so many I can't, unfortunately, uh, my internet's been a bit dodgy and I can't see the footage that you're showing at the moment, so I don't know who it is that they're fighting, but I've probably fought them and got frustrated with them. It, I, I'm, <laughs> it's probably not going to um, not going to help you much, but it's a big guy that looks like a knight. There's a lot of them. And uh, uh, <laughs> he's got, he, t he seemed to turn into this kind of organic tree thing you know? oh yeah that's like that's actually the first boss you encounter oh, that guy right, uh, right. Um, yeah there's what a lot of the bosses in this game they all have like dual um like a second section so right. you, after you take away like a third of their health or half their health they'll sort of 
rage out and do like a new move set or they'll mm. power up like they'll become like they'll become covered in flames or they'll like do something or other that sort of makes it very difficult there's one boss where it's basically two bosses it's an optional one and it's an awesome boss uh, it's called the nameless king and he's so hard he comes flying down on this huge like drake which is like um like a fire breathing fire breathing bird dragon type monster and he comes landing down on this huge thing and he's got a lightning spear and you're like <clears throat> okay then so you have to kill the drake that he's riding and that's like it's got its own health bar and then he's like right then he gets off it and starts attacking you with his lightning spear and that's when the fight really gets going because the drake you think is this huge dragon you're like that's pretty intimidating but that's actually easy compared to him when he gets off and he's just constantly throwing lightning and uh, you, just, <laughs> you, you have to like wait for the exact moment to strike and then you get like you've got this i had a, a weapon that was leveled up to level 10 and i've got all my stats up so that my uh, my dexterity uh, scaled the weapon up loads it was a weapon that if you had high dexterity would increase your attack because it's a dexterity weapon right so i had that up really high up like my weapon was doing like 390 damage which is a lot and i was hitting this guy and his help i'll just go eh. i'm like seriously like really <laughs> you have to like hit him like 50 times to get him and each time you try and hit him you have to make sure that he doesn't smack you because it's like two hits and you're dead one thing one thing <laughs> i noticed last time we were watching some footage um <clears throat> i think it was last week uh, when you st when you're fighting the standard mobs it looks like they literally do mob you like they don't they don't wait for one one mob to hit you and then we yeah don't... that's true and you can you can manage that it's a kind of game where i it, you're advised to sort of walk along with your shield up and each time you come to new uh, to a corner walk around it gingerly and sort of look and try and ascertain what enemies are there i i have a pretty good tactic for these games that seems to get me through which is to have like a really good sword a decent shield and uh, a bow with lots of arrows equipped so that i can find enemies like shoot one draw it to me take it out let its attacks and then try and move on and do each enemy in turn rather than run into an area get attacked by five guys because even the, even when you're leveled up to like a level 100 the first enemy in this game can kill you if you're careless mm -hmm. they they are always lethal um and that's one of the things that i really I like about it because you feel like you get more powerful and, but the game gets more intimidating as you go on as well so you have to level up. You have See, to get your weapons up I know in it, order to stand a chance. I know it's not comparis uh, comparable, but it reminds me a little bit of, not not the gameplay specifically, but what you just said there about uh, the enemies being quite difficult. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like the Batman games, you know, where and, and even The Witcher to an extent. Whereas mm. if, you, if you're not careful, you could still get killed by even just a, a group of 20 mobs in Batman or whatever, you know, that is true. They're all easy to take mm -hmm. out. If you're 20 of them and you just start button bashing and you're not timing things properly, you're going to get battered by them. Yeah, even, I remember in The Witcher, yeah, even as I was getting, like, upgrades to my armor and stuff, if I was careless, a couple of attacks would just take off two-thirds of my health, like, really quickly, and well, you'd be yeah. like, well, ugh. You didn't use potions, did you, or did you? Uh, I did use potions, but I didn't use... That many of them, and I would sometimes you get into a certain situation, um, and you can't uh, you can't apply or do certain things in the middle of the fight. I don't think, yeah. uh, like you can't you can't adjust your mutagens in the middle of a fight, can you? Yes, and you can also can you? apply oils in the middle of a fight as well. You can apply. I always was applying the oils and all that, but you can still get caught out in mm. that game and like anyway, smack yes. the death. <laughs> but yeah, what I like about it, and we'll come on to this later because it's one of the news articles, is that it felt like like a capping off of the whole like franchise because there's obviously demon souls as well which dark souls is the spiritual successor that was cross-platform whereas demon souls was the first, was the game that they had that kind of gameplay it was the sword the shield the, all the item management everything is exactly the same in demon souls it's just that dark souls they've created a new ip with the same gameplay and made it cross-platform whereas demon souls was a sony only product so they couldn't release it on other things because they were like contracted to just have it on playstation so they did the smart move. They made Dark Souls, which they could release on everything, and it became like the pretty big, pretty big franchise. Actually, I think Dark Souls Three, when it came out, sold a lot of units, and obviously they had Bloodborne and Dark Souls Two did really well. well and, uh, again, I think that's a news, possibly a news article. Yeah, it does feel like a capping off to the series, though, oh, which no. we'll come back to. It was something I saw on the news article in one of the videos, and apparently Dark Souls has broken all kinds of records. 
um, for for the Dark Souls series. It's it sold sixty three percent more than the previous game. I think it was something like that. Oh wow! I think, there's a, I think there's a little bit of a Witcher kind of thing where each game has had like they've been critically quite well received from the beginning, and they've built up like a little sort of hardcore following of fans who've been going from the beginning. But each time a new game comes out, they reach slightly more and more people. Hmm. And then by the time the third main entry comes out, it's this like big success, which is exactly what happened with The Witcher 3. The first Witcher came out and it was like, here's this new you know, fantasy RPG type game. Second one came out the same year as Skyrim. And people were saying, oh, this game's actually kind of better than Skyrim in some ways. And acted quite well. And The Witcher 3 came out and was like dominated 2015 pretty much. Yeah, It was, it was the mean- biggest game. All four of us were. Did you play it, Leon, Witcher 3? No, I still haven't picked it up. Oh, well, we, we got it when it came out, all four of us, I think. And everyone, it's highly recommended. <laughs> yeah, everyone but Lou, who's just a Mizog, um, <laughs> absolutely in, were, were enamoured with it for months and months. Then Fallout 4 came out, and some of us moved on to that and then didn't actually complete Witcher, but we went yeah. back to it. I think all of us have now gone back to it, apart from Steve. Oh, no, nice, it's, a, nice. it's a brilliant game if you like action-adventure games, you know. I definitely want to check too. it out. I mean, like, I, I, I did sort of see the footage and everything and was like, yeah, man, this does look really good. But I just sort of was like, ah, you know what, I'll, I'll wait, though. I'll wait. I'll, I'll pick it up later. I'm, not, I'm in no rush. <laughs> I, I was very lucky, and I said lucky. I got it with a new graphics card, so I just... I, 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 oh, nice. I didn't need to buy it anyway, so I was lucky in that. But... Plus, I mean, that game is gorgeous on PS4, so on a high-end PC, I imagine it's even more beautiful because yeah. it's a damn, damn good looking game it is very nice um i I was playing it in 4k for a little bit as well and it's uh it's particularly beautiful in uh in 4k i bet (laughs) computer doesn't play it very well and it doesn't run at very very decent frames per second but it you know (laughs) it's it looks very nice (laughs) okay um so leon i'll let you go next then what have you what else have you been playing well, I've been getting into some Rocket League. Uh, okay. So, I'm, 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 are you guys familiar with Rocket League at all? I have. Yeah, been. we we almost talked about trying to. Have, we toyed with the idea of possibly doing like a multiplayer stream of it, didn't we? But we never did it in the end. I'm sure we mentioned it ages ago when it first came out. It's the 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 problem that we have with Rocket League is that we have been playing mods for Quake and for Unreal, Carball, for example. Mm. Uh, which are basically Rocket League, and, <laughs> and we've been playing them since the '90s. So Rocket League to us, even though I'm sure it's a brilliant game, is a bit of a waste of time because we've already done it. Oh yeah, but I mean, like this is implemented to perfection. Mm. I'm just gonna throw that out there now because you know there it's 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 basically it's by um Psionics if uh, if you didn't know, and for the people that don't know out there, it is football with cars yeah Uh, it's pretty much what it is um but there is like you can kind of the cars can jump uh they can also they also have a boost um where if you utilize it correctly you can fly across the map while using your boost as well um which kind of sort of lends in nicely to kind of the new um uh, update that they've just brought out this month uh, where they've added uh, a sort of a basketball kind of thing uh, called hoops uh, it's a 2v2 mode and uh i, I hopefully in the video later on uh, it kind of i do show a game of that i'm just kind of doing a 1v1 on the video there at the moment because uh, i've been kind of trying to i've been getting into the game a bit lately and i was sort of like you know what i'll give it a go competitively and didn't go girl. particularly well uh but it was uh, on uh, gloryforgamers.com uh they run sort of regular tournaments all the time and uh i thought i'd try my luck uh in a 2v2 with a a good friend of mine dan and uh we were went out first game both times we tried (laughs) (laughs) um they they're honestly the uh the the level of uh skill uh, out there on this game is it's actually crazy because you know at the end of the day there is an e you know, a whole esports thing around it as well oh, you know yeah, there course, is proper yeah. big tournaments for it because you know it, i think it's the only sports game i've ever got into sports <laughs> game i really got into uh, ufc when that came ah, out. That's okay pretty yeah much it for sports games for me mike mike is a massive fan of uh, ufc yeah, and that, he, loves so. his, he loves his nfls and sports games in general doesn't he 
he does he yeah. does for sure so um for those who don't know mike is uh, one of my uh, co-hosts on uh, my podcast game yeah. over here and he has been on the show twice before as well so is it twice i thought yeah. it was once but uh, oh, he, he came on once um pissed and the second time he came on uh, <laughs> you know I what i remember pissed. i think he was pissed for that as well I, yeah no i think he probably was <laughs> he, I, he's uh yeah no he's, he's a good man <laughs> i liked it i like i like mike yeah when but honestly when he's on the drink or that kind of thing he is absolutely hilarious so. <laughs> yeah he definitely yeah he definitely kept us going that day no we, we've <laughs> i got i got sent um uh, a, a, a steam key for this from one of our uh, viewers um who isn't in today but um guy called potato who's who's around quite a lot and he, he sent me one i think he must have had a spare one and i haven't yet played it but it's there for when i'm whenever anyone says oh do you fancy a game of rocket league you know i totally recommend it because i mean at the end of the day it has got that sort of pick up and play mentality because it is just a five minute game every time yeah and uh, that's that's the thing that i like about it is that you know it is easy to get into a game uh, you can do 1v1 2v2 3v3 uh, 4v4 which is called chaos because it bloody is <laughs> um <laughs> and there's also a, a labs mode where they've kind of got these experimental kind of uh, things like there's like moon ball where like the gravity is uh yeah sort of in uh, not increased uh lowered i suppose right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that you're kind of like sort of jumping around and like you're sort of floating <laughs> about which is kind of cool because um they give you extra boost uh, so that you can kind of fly around uh, as well so it, they've kind of put a lot of elements to it um where you know it kind of keeps the game interesting and then you know especially with this new update that they've just done for hoops um you know it obviously instead of your usual goals you've got two hoops and there's uh, like a net underneath where if the ball touches it like it goes up you know kind goes up the net um but if you're like um if you're driving uh, you you just drive right through it so it's literally only the ball kind of it, you can kind of use it as a like a hill as such to be able to get through to it and it's a shame that i i should have uh, cut the the, uh, the footage a bit better so that you had your uh, the, <laughs> the uh, basketball stuff up first it's um it's it does appeal to me but not on my own you know and most of the time these days i play games on my own i don't really play with friends because sam's on consoles and to be fair i don't I mean, i've got a ps4 but i don't really have it plugged in this at the moment or use it yeah. that much and all my other pc friends are all busy with life and girlfriends and mm. jobs and things like that whereas i don't have one and i just sit here playing games all the time <laughs> You can always play against strangers online. I'm sure that would be lovely to be. But to be fair, with Rocket League, you know, it's it's a fairly good bunch out there. I mean, don't get me wrong, you will, you will lose the odd game because of an idiot, but, you know, but sometimes you are that idiot mm. because, you know, because it's easy to make a mistake, you know, on, on that game because, you know, you'll be trying to, like, you know, save, save, but you end up, you know, scoring an own goal or something. It, it can easily happen. I'm not <laughs> particularly competitive when it comes to these things either, so I get a little bit... I get a little bit annoyed if people get too competitive with these things as well. So yeah. that's why it's I just like playing with friends, you know. Just calm down a bit. Yeah, it's it yeah. is just a game, mate. Yeah, I mean the the good thing is is that it, you, there isn't any like uh, like voice uh, kind of thing in the game, so you you're not That's good. You, you're not hearing other people. It's right. all like a text based kind of thing. And if you're on a PS4, for example, um, like it's literally predetermined text things. You can type things in, but you you just don't bother. There's like a there's like a quick chat things like nice shot and uh, <laughs> and oh, what a save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's something that i will eventually have a go of i've missed the uh, the initial kind of frenzy i think because mm. that's that was a it came out a couple of years ago now didn't it uh i think it was last year because it, it well it, it won um awards for last year anyway at mm. the bafta uh, game awards so you know it's um it's come a long way uh for sure uh, a lot of people are happy with it and uh i think it's a game that i'm always going to be going back to just for that pick up and play you know capability yeah definitely i said it's, it's, it's i think uh get some friends involved and i'll be on it but random public is not my my idea of fun <laughs> 
That's fair enough, man. That's fair enough. I mean, well, PS4 and PC, you can play together on Rocket League, but I don't think you can join into a party, though. I think that's the only weird thing on that level. But you can, you definitely do. Uh, it is cross platform on their servers. Yeah, there's a, that's like the second, or only the second cross platform, cross platform game I've ever come across. And the first one was Portal 2. Portal 2, yeah. We have we still haven't played that together. <laughs> no, I know. I've, I've played through a lot of the Portal 2 caught with my older sister, but I stopped. she hasn't been here very much and we stopped playing it ages ago, so I never finished it. Yeah. It was getting bloody hard, though, towards the end. Yeah, and you have to be with people, <laughs> with someone who's got patience. Mm. Yeah, I think, well, I think you and I would probably be better because we're more of that gamer mindset to think about it, whereas... Um, I played through all the Portal and Lucy had never played it before, so she she got it. But she didn't have all the experience that I had, and I was like, "Oh, you've got to think about it in this mm. way. Like, you have to use your inertia and like having to figure out all this stuff that I already knew." Whereas Chris and I have already completed both portals, so we'd probably get through it a bit faster, I reckon. Mm. I um, I gave my wife control of uh, it wasn't Portal, but no, actually, I think it was Portal Two. I gave her control of Portal Two, and also asked her to play or give her control of um, uh, the Stanley Parable as well. And oh. all the way through the Stanley Parable, she was she was just going, she was just following what the narrator was saying, and she wasn't getting <laughs> the game, and she was she was just following blindly what he was telling her to do. And I was like, do you know there's another door there? You can go through that other door if you want, but the narrator's telling me to go through that door. But that, so she doesn't really get the computer game thing, if you know what I mean. She she plays all the Atari games, but they're all very mm. linear and you know, basic, and and it's it's just a case of. The portal stuff just blew her mind. She had she she couldn't figure out how firing a portal on one wall and then firing it on another wall, even right next to it, how it worked. She couldn't figure out that why can I see myself? Why is that wall behind me in that portal? I can't. She just couldn't couldn't get it. So she couldn't figure the puzzles out. So. <laughs> She were she was incapable of thinking with portals. Then yeah, as the as the phrase goes. Uh, <laughs> It's, it, it, to us it's second nature because we've kind of mm. grown up with these kind of games and it's interesting exactly. to see someone who's essentially uh, I, I don't mean any disrespect to my wife but essentially kind of a child when it comes to it you know because she hasn't any experience really of mm. playing computer games and she gets she gets quite stressed when a computer like like that Stanley Parable thing she's like well it's telling me to do this but if I go down that route then it's going to start telling and the, the narrator does start telling you off when I forced her to go down that path and she, she's like well I'm going to go down the other one again this time because he told me not to do what I just did. <laughs> oh, no, that's not the point. <laughs> well, I, think this is, I, think, I think a phrase I would rather use is that, that, not that I think we're more gaming literate in that we we understand the, the sort of unspoken language of games that like, when, as soon as someone tells you to go, your objective is over here, yeah. everybody that's been playing games since the 1980s is going to go, I'm going to go the other way and, and see what's down there, because it might be a special collectible power-up, or I might get some more money, or I might like find a secret thing, or like just to say, fuck you to the game, like, I don't want to do what you told me, yeah. I want to go find my own adventure, wherever the hell, I'll go your way later on. Like that's whenever you get to an open area, yeah. like whenever you get in a Grand Theft Auto game, you don't just go through the main missions and never do like explore the city. You have to explore the world and find your own like stuff. Yeah. And I think when you grew up with it, when you grew up playing like Mario and Sonic and moving on to the other games, you got you become so used to that the way that games communicate with you that again, that's why a game like Bioshock would never have been as impactful. If say if Bioshock was the first game you ever played, and spoilers for the end of Bioshock, but. We all know the would you kindly twist the end of Bioshock, I believe, mm -hmm. is that, you know, you've been... Every time this guy says, would you kindly go to your objective, it's because the character in the game has been conditioned to always obey that phrase, which, as a gamer, made you feel a bit of a weird, like... This is so, a, like a weird connection issue with you and the character, where it's like, yeah, but I've just been playing the game, but playing the game has been doing what this guy's been telling me to do, but that's what all games do to you. Mm -hmm. So, if you've never played a game before, you played Bioshock, that would have been like... Oh, that's a bit weird. But for like gamers, it was like this like mindfuck moment for people um, because you like when you're when you're into the world, you, you understand the all the little messages that games give you through world building and stuff. Not just necessarily like go over here, but all the other ways that a game can sort of display its I don't know its secrets to you and its the, uh, the way it conveys things. Well, it's the you, tropes, you, isn't it? It's mm, game yeah. tropes, simple as that. But if you have a different understanding of it than, say, someone like your wife Sally, who 
hasn't played that hasn't played the sheer number of games that like you and I have over over our lifetime, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on. So I've oh, I've went back to an old um, uh, cellophane wrapped game that I never touched um, back back when I bought it about what two thousand eight I think. Uh, Xbox 360 game and because I, I was a bit bored the other week and me and the wife had ran out of the on Fridays we sometimes play games Leon so I play a game and she watches and she's quite happy with that she quite enjoys it weirdly oh cool um, so or sometimes I try and get her to do to play the game but she ends up just giving it back the controller back to me <laughs> so it's stressed especially if it's like a high stress game like for example another game we've been playing recently Zombie U um, oh yeah it's it's even for me i can't play i play it for the three hours or so that i can play it and i'm i'm stressed by the time i finished because it's just <laughs> it's such a it's such a it's so environmental and it's like i could die mm. at any moment it's not a particularly difficult game but mm. i think i think having the wii u controller makes it more difficult than using a mouse and keyboard which would be more natural to me for yeah that yeah. kind of thing but anyway, she she plays this game and she just presses all the buttons at once and manages to kill a zombie because she stabs it with something or whatever, and uh, and it just ends up handing me the control back. So anyway, so I went back to uh, an old game, uh, Red Dead Redemption: Undead Nightmare, hey. which oh, no, I it's... finally played. As I said, it's been in the cellophane. I actually had the whole new game unwrapping ceremony the other the other night. <laughs> wow, <laughs> over like a seven-year-old game. <laughs> yeah, for, for a really old game. And it's on the 360, so I think it's in 720p. Um, mm, so this quality is not be, going yeah. to be amazing. But going back to it, first of all, um, if you haven't played Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare, it's essentially... A zombie outbreak in a kind of it's 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 set before the 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 Red Dead Redemption game, I believe, and it's set kind of, must be in an I mean it has to be in an alternative universe because um, it's it's set at a weird point. If you remember the the story of Red Dead Redemption, there's a bit when you get back to your family and your wife and that old like that old uncle guy and your kid, hmm. and then there's a bit where you're there and then the end of the game happens and there's a it's sort of set when you're back at the ranch, not it, so it's set just before the end of the game, right? Oh, okay. you, you, your kid's in it, isn't he? Jack's in it, yeah, yeah. and uh, his wife, I forget her name, and the old, okay. the I old beardy man, the yeah, uncle dude, is in it. it was set beforehand, but it's not. Uh, it's obviously set in an alternative universe, and here I am chasing down a whore, as you do in all <laughs> Western games. Um, anyway, so obviously it, everyone, there's a zombie outbreak, and you know everything's kicking off, and there's loads of undead horses and undead animals everywhere so everything's kind of replaced but one of the things i two of the things that i i noticed when i played it is one how far games have come since red dead redemption mm. the open world games specifically I, it's still wonderful don't get me wrong but um, and and secondly it seems to me this th- th- i don't know if it's just because this is dlc but there's not that much to do in it there's not as much to do in, in the DLC as there is in the main game, that's for sure. Because, I mean, you don't you don't have any of the, you know, poker stuff that you have. You don't have any of the games that you can play. There's very oh, okay. little extra missions. You basically follow a fairly linear mission path. And then you have to essentially unlock graveyards. Um, so you have to take out, you have to burn coffins and un, um, kill a lot of zombies in a graveyard. Mm-hmm. And then you also have to uh, help towns... Uh, from from ho- zombie hordes, and then you have to keep doing that. So as you go through all of the towns in the world, they're all on fire basically, and you have to um, stop those zombie hordes. And then they'll keep getting attacked as you mm. as you move through the world. But it, it has it's only happened maybe two or three times to me so far. And I've nearly unlocked every town, um, and I think I've nearly cleared every graveyard as well. I'm hoping something else is going to happen because it's feeling a little bit boring to me as it stands. But it is DLC, so I um, can't really complain that much. You know, it's not the main game. Yeah, it is a DLC, and it is because it's DLC. It's more like a struck a straightforward thing. There are other things to do, though. There are undead uh, like animal hunting challenges. We have to go and find like the chupacabra and like the other yeti. like mythical myth- the yetis in it. I think as well. Oh, that's and there's cool. also <laughs> you also have the four horses of the apocalypse. Yes, which to be found and captured. Um, yeah, there's, so there's, I think, like, famine and pestilence are first, and then war is on fire, which is really handy, because you can run over the zombies in 
on the war horse and set them on fire and kill them, you which is I, like super useful. I found mm. pestilence and war. I didn't find famine if he's available. Um, but and I found death pestilence is and war. One of the last both one. of them are shot in the head by accident. <laughs> Apparently, pestilence. When you get pestilence, he's nearly unkillable. But I shot him once in the head and he was dead. And I did it. Oops. I did it during a zombie horde. Because the problem you have is that when the zombies kick off, if you haven't got enough ammo, which you, you, it's fairly rare in this game, you, you just you know you, you just have to start pushing them away with your guns mm. and um, you know conserving your ammo as much as you can using your red eye stuff, which is again slightly different from the main game. It's a little bit more focused on red eye, mm. I think, in this game. Um, the lasso doesn't seem to do that much either in this version. It's not that handy. Well, yeah, because they're dead, so it's not really going to do much to dead people. I mean, in the, in the original game, it was really handy. Yeah, yeah. You could subdue people with it, um, which was really good. And it was funny as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Dragging them behind your hooves. In terms of, in terms of how... Uh, that's the, my first comment in, in terms of how far open-world games have come. It's not that I feel like it's lacking in anything, because it is what it is. It's an open-world cowboy game where you're running around in you know, open pastures and going from town to town. and But it just, I don't know, it feels it, it feels a little bit, I've used the word so many times, it feels a little bit loose. It feels like it's not very, the, the game isn't very tight. And I don't know if, I don't know if that's because it's DLC and there's not much else going on. Or I don't Do know mean, if I'd feel the same when I went, if I went back to Red Dead Redemption, the full game, because I know well, there's a lot more in that. What do you mean loose is in the gameplay itself as in the actual physical controlling of the character or what do you mean like the world? Well, definitely the controlling of the character. I got really frustrated with uh, not being able to stop on the spot. You know, you've got quite a... Not being able... Like here, for example, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get away from the zombies and get up and speak to this guy up here and I can't get on top of anything. No matter how much I jump and what angle I try and get, oh, yeah. get up it, it's, it's all. I mean, I've tried everything around there, and I just couldn't get to him. And it's like the whole point is: as soon as you get to a um, a town, you can go and speak to the leader of the town, and he'll give you a task to go and get. Again, this is the same in every town: um, to go and get ammo and give ammo to all of the people in the town in order to mm -hmm. reduce the amount of zombies in order to get to the final stage which is basically kill the remaining zombies to stop the town so if you get to a town where you can't get to the guy because they're in random places every time you restart the town if you die for example um <laughs> just set yourself on fire if you want yeah that's uh, always fun uh, uh -huh. But if you uh, if you can't get to him and there's tons of zombies, like these little dots at the top denote how many stages or how many people you have to give ammo to in order to get to the final stage, you just have to kill hordes and hordes and hordes and hordes and fucking hordes of them um, in order to get to the final stage. I think it's probably I'm complaining about something that's essentially a horde, you know, like a, a Gears of War horde game, you know? Mm. There is a lot of that to it, and it wasn't obviously the original engine of Red Dead wasn't really built for that kind of combat. So, it, yeah, when they're all running at you, you, you do feel that you have to use a lot of the Dead Eye stuff. Um, but I, what I really like about it is the fact that it's you still get the whole entire map to run around with a whole new story, uh, and the story itself is like deliberately B movie and silly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, especially when you get to the end of it, from what I remember. Well, I'm enjoying the story, I'll tell you that much, and I yeah. just wish there was a little bit less repetitive stuff, you know? The, the, I will concede that that is true, but I still really enjoyed the DLC. I mean, um, it, there's still a, there's still a few like extra things you can do and extra little undead hunter quests and things that you can do. Plus, obviously, in the original game, you have got random people out in the world. Whereas in this, everyone's dead, pretty much. So it's, it's slightly different. There's some random encounters, but they're not, they're not very interesting. Yeah. In fact, they're all mm -hmm. the same. And, and is there anything you can do with the guy? There's occasionally a new guy every time you, you come across it, but um, the guy that's just sitting eating his brother in the countryside, he's, he's in a campsite, sat there eating his brother. And there's another one who's sat there eating something while his wife is tied up because she's a zombie. And I'm not sure if there's any, any point to that. Oh. Because it's a... I forgot about that. I, I, remember, I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember because it's been so long since I played it that I don't remember the, the ins and outs of that stuff. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's still all right for what it is. I'm going to finish it, I think. I'm going to try and uh, get to a point where I at least finish the story. I'm getting a bit bored of the 
you know, the continuous yeah. trying to save towns and stuff. But yeah. it, it's nowhere near as good as the original Red Dead Redemption game, but it, I still say it's damn good for DLC. Like in terms of, uh, I can't remember how much it was uh, when, you, when when I downloaded it because I didn't buy the physical copy. But let's say the original Red Dead Redemption would have been forty, forty-five quid when it came out. Uh, the DLC wasn't that much, but it still has a good like ten hours or so of gameplay in it. I think it's still got quite a good time length. Um, yeah. And I remember thinking, oh, that's that's money well spent, considering that I'd bought other DLCs for other things that were just like shit. Yeah. And it felt like, oh, this is actually like, good content. They've actually given me something meaty here, a whole new game mode rather than just like his an extra building to go and go in. I suppose it's um, <laughs> to me. It's more. It might even be the fact that I've left it so long, and DLC e- even now has come on quite a bit. So well, yeah. I say that there's still some absolute rubbish DLC that people release, but generally quality DLC is quite. Uh, you come across it more often these days, don't you? Like, for example, the Hearts of Stone stuff from uh, The Witcher, mm. which is you know expansive and has a lot of detail in it. It's supposed to be pretty good, though. I've not played it yet, but yeah. Yes. Anyway, so yes, I've been playing that. Oh. So Sam's go, I believe. You got any other games you've been playing? Just, just the one um, that I, I, I was waiting for this, and it came out like a week after Dark Souls Three. So I bought it on the re- day release. It's the Ratchet and Clank reboot. Where there's a lot of games like this where it's just called Ratchet and Clank. So I put 2016 in the document because they just released these games, and it is a remake of the first one. So I can forgive them for that. But um, there's so many games where they do like a new sequel, but they just go, we'll go back to the original title. Like yeah, Mortal yeah. Kombat 9, which is called Mortal Kombat. Well, and, I mean, uh, this one is because it's a movie. Like, yeah. It's because it's, it's um, they've got the uh, Ratchet and Clank movie. So yeah, this um, one is actually, the, the game is, <laughs> so it's a movie, uh, no, sorry, it's a game about a movie about yeah, a game. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and so Crazy the, the movie, inception there. The movie is coming out rather ill-advisedly, I would say, on the same day as Marvel Civil War. Um, in the UK, it's like, who decided that was the good weekend? Because it's not going to make any money. Like, I'm going to go and see Marvel Civil War on the Friday. I won't is be it? going to the cinema again that weekend. And I want to go and see Ratchet and Clank. I'm a long-time fan, but I want to see Civil War more. Like, probably everybody wants to see... Civil War. Well, not everybody, but I think a lot of people are going to go and see that film. Um, it looks really? awesome, by the way. That's beside the point. But yeah, so that, the, the game, Ratchet and Clank, it, it, it is a, a reboot, as it were, for the franchise. Because I think they want to do the movie, and the movie goes back to the beginning of them first meeting, and the first mission, um, the first quest, or the first thing that they do. Uh, and this is how they, the, the, the story ties in quite well into how they meet, actually. So for those of you that haven't played or know and it's about it. Ratchet and Clank is um, like a futuristic, very sort of light-hearted and fun uh, sci-fi platforming shoot 'em up uh, with a hell lot of emphasis on the shooting. So there's a lot of platforming in it, but there's a lot of emphasis on very, very big guns. Well, I, I say big guns, but I think they only look big because your character is a little guy. Like compared to all the other humanoid type people. Ratchet is like half the size. He's basically a little cat-like dude called a Lombax, and he's the only one of his kind in the galaxy that he knows about. And it's like the rest of them mysteriously disappeared. So he's like the only one. And so whenever he gets one of these big guns, it's like massive. It's like a rocket launcher, and it's like massive on him. Whereas a normal person, it'd be like a normal-sized rocket launcher. <laughs> uh, but all the, there's a lot of like wacky guns that do very crazy things. Like I just got a gun in the new game called the Pixelator. Which is, uh, you shoot it and it turns things into 8 bit pixel versions of themselves for a second and that weakens them and then you can like hit them and destroy them. Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so the story is, it's a pretty generic story. It's not like the most in depth story ever, but basically, uh, this, this guy called Drek, who's one of these, like, is a race of certain people whose planet is dying. He goes, My planet's dying, so I'll build a new planet by stealing parts of other people's planets. So he just goes around and starts like destroying other planets to get harvest their materials, basically to make a new home for his race of people. And he's a bit of a like a, he's like a corporate sort of douchebag pillock type guy. He's got like the slick back <laughs> hair. He's got a dodgy is this, suit on. Is this a skinny guy? Or is it the um, green guy? 
the green, uh, the big green. I can't. Unfortunately, the footage is gone for me again. The big green guy with a lightning bolt on his chest is Captain Quark, and he's basically Zap Brannigan. Is of, he a good, he a good guy or is he an ambiguous kind of... He's ambiguous. Right. Okay. And the game starts with him in jail telling the story of how Ratchet and Clank came to be, like, heroes. So mm-hmm. you know that Cassie Quark ends up in jail, which is not a surprise to anybody who's played the other games because Cassie Quark has always been a bit of a... Plank. He's like a hero, but he's, 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 he's that bad again. He's like, ostensibly, he thinks he's a hero and he acts like he should be a hero, but he's basically a twat. <laughs> uh, just like that bad again. And he has, uh, he has ideas about his own worth that are way above his actual like worth um and so clank is like this weird robot that comes out of the robot kill factory that this bad guy's making but he comes out as this little cute little robot and he escapes gets in his ship crash lands on ratchet's like planet where he lives fixing up old spaceships ratchet finds him and he gets like oh i've got to stop this stuff from happening ratchet goes cool i'm up for an adventure and they go and do the adventure and they get in spaceships to do a day. <laughs> he pretty much he's just like well i've been waiting for someone to do because i'm bored on this planet like so let's go and have an adventure. So they go off and have an adventure, go to different planets, kill a load of aliens, get loads of gadgets, guns, jump around, have space fights, go on hoverboard races and do loads save of like wacky stuff. <laughs> they don't save any princesses, actually. No. There's no princess saving. There's a, the, the few female characters that are in the Ratchet and Clank games are always like, they're just, well, there's, there's not like princesses. They're just like usually badass females. Like they're usually like a, one of the, people that you encounter is like one of the um there's like the space rangers i don't know what they're called that or the galaxy rangers or something and there's like there's a guy who's like a weapons expert and then there's a woman who's like the tactics expert so it just kind of like there aren't any like damsels in distress or anything like that. it isn't that kind of yeah yeah story uh, there's lots of very silly aliens their, their remit like has been for a long time to try and make like an interactive pixar movie and that's the kind of feel that they're going for so it has like quite cartoony graphics but very very they look really lovely at the same time. Like, this it. is one of the nicest looking games. Like it's so gorgeous. This it game. It looks quite. It looks quality. You know, it looks good. And and, and I've no I've no problem with it. It's just I mean I've got a lot of platformers to play. You know, and it's just to yeah. me, it doesn't seem like it'd be that different on my eyes. But I know you're a big fan. <laughs> it's uh, I can, uh, if you if you've been into Mario for a long time, then it's it's not anything that major different from like a platformer but it has got all the big guns and the the sci-fi gadgety element of it is kind of what gives it a lot of its appeal yeah the fact that there's all these like crazy gadgets and widgets and up you get like rocket jetpacks upgrades for clank Mm -hmm. Uh, because the the robot you basically carry the robot on your back and you upgrade him with all these different things that enable you to like do all this cool shit like you get a helicopter pack at the start of the game and you get a rocket pack and then you can upgrade the rocket pack so you can fly around and on the levels and stuff so it's all like that kind of it's a bit of a bit of a metroidvania as well in that you go to certain levels and you need a certain gadget that you'll acquire later to come back and access a certain area and like there'll be certain underwater levels that you can't get to until you get the the helmet that allows you to breathe underwater or right you yeah, can't yeah. do you can't access this certain part of the level yet because you haven't got the the rocket jet pack or whatever so it has a lot of that kind of stuff in it as well and you can go back to all the planets and explore areas that you've not been to uh, and there's always there's always a tradition as well which i really like of having a, a gladiator arena there'll be a certain planet where you can go to a gladiator arena and just go in a load of combat challenges to get cooler and cooler stuff and they're really good fun they're really hard that's like when the true difficulty of the game comes in is if you want to do the whole gladiator thing it's it's brutal usually there's a lot of jumping jumping and shooting at the right time uh required but yeah i'm really really enjoying it and i, I am going to go and see the film I mean, it is. It isn't like particularly sophisticated kind of writing or anything. So <laughs> I don't expect the film to be like as good as the best of Pixar in terms of how the story and the writing's put together. But it looks really nice. It's got the original game creators are all on board. They're using the actual like in-game engine almost on most of the film. So it's going to look and feel like the game, which no video game movie is yet to actually accomplish <laughs> to actually represent the game on screen properly. Yeah. Which I'm quite looking forward to. So, so the the PlayStation magazine I'm I'm reading at the moment. It's a, quite a few months old now, but that that's got, I think it's uh, I've got a limited edition subscriber cover, and it's got mm. all of the Ratchet and Clank cast all in a recording studio doing doing the voiceovers for it. It's quite funny. They've got it's some like, pretty good people on the voice cast for the I movie. John, the John, people. I meant the characters in the game. Oh, the characters! <laughs> I got you. So oh, yeah. that makes sense. That's the kind of thing they would do, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's well good. Anybody that likes like actiony, jumpy platformers with a very, very silly like sense of humour, 
uh, very sort of light-hearted, but with like decent enough story. Uh, you can't go wrong in it. And it's been, apparently, I just was reading the news articles before, and uh, it's come out and it's jumped to the top of the PlayStation Four charts cool. quite quickly. It's just overtaken Dark Souls Three on PS Four, and it's only thirty quid as well. So they've, it is like a full game, but because oh, it's a remake, they've not released it a full game like also, forty-five quid price. Is it a remake or a reimagining? Um, it's a bit of both. I haven't got to them yet, but I, I am assured that there are extra planets and places to go that aren't in the original Ratchet & Clank game. And there are obviously mechanics that they've developed into the later games that they've put into this one. There's a lot of stuff that they had in the later games, because there's a lot of games in this series now, that yeah, they've yeah. put that, let's put all the cool stuff that you're used to in the later ones right back into the first one, but they weren't there. If you go back and play the first one, there's quite a lot of, like, the way you aim at bad guys is totally, like, weird and different to how they developed it later. They've got a lot more slick later on. Um, so they've put all that in. So I think, yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's a, re it is a remake because the first few levels are literally like exactly the same, but just bigger and cooler. But they are the same. You go along the same bits, but they just everything looks. It's all a bit bigger and a bit more impressive, and you get to interact with it in a slightly more slick way. It's a very polished game. The game feels very nice. Um, it feels very good to play. Do you know what I mean? Like it has a nice feel to it. Is it? It's not Naughty Dog, is it? That do it? No, it's in uh, Insomniac. So, Naughty Dog's other franchise, what's that? Cause it's Jack and Crash Daxter. Bandicoot. And Crash Bandicoot. And Crash Bandicoot, yeah. And I keep forgetting that they, well, when I first heard about Uncharted, I actually thought they were brand new to Uncharted, but they've been doing PlayStation games forever, haven't they? Since the PlayStation 1, yeah. they are the old school developers. Yeah. Anyway, yeah Jack, and Daxter was the, was the, Jack and Daxter was like the PS2. They were kind of like, uh, they were kind of like friendly rivals, because... There's quite a lot of references to Jack and Daxter in the Ratchet and Clank games, and vice versa. There's references to Ratchet and Clank in the Jack and Daxter games, so the devs actually had a lot of respect for each other because yeah. they were doing similar kind of games. Mm -hmm. You both play as like a, a dude with big guns jumping around on platforms with a little sidekick like on your back. So they're basically the same kind of game. Yeah, it yeah. came out at the same time on the same console. But I've never really played Jack and Daxter. I've heard they're really good though. No, I, I get them muddled up because I haven't played either. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's it for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go next because I've got a few more games than uh, than you do, Leon. I'll let you finish. Um, I've been oh, playing yeah. a few mobile games, but um, I'm gonna very very quickly run through them. First one's called Uni War, uh, which is a strategy sim or strategy game where you control. Uh, oh God! Every time, every time, right? Uh, where you control uh, a a race of of either i think they're called carillions one of them and then there's humanoids and then there's also some mech things okay. um and you have to essentially it's a, it's a it's like it looks like a 4x game but it's just a top-down mobile game this is actually from my um from my android device android pad as you can see by the controls on the bottom actually the, yeah. um, so it's not actually going there we go now it's playing um so you you control a race and you have to take over bases and essentially there is a campaign with a story and each of the races have their own little story in it but it's just a, it's just a cool little casual game that i play again on the loo you know <laughs> it's, it's one of yeah. those things. i don't play it seriously but there's a, there's c units there's flying units and all of them have different stats and all of them have different abilities um related to like for example if you're an engineer you can take over um the robots uh, on if you're an engineer on the humanoid side you can take over robots if you're a, a scorpion support unit on the arachnid side you can poison people you know around you and um so all, all of them can attack different distances it's a strategy game essentially not mm -hmm. going to go into too much more detail unless you've got any questions it's it's not that much more interesting than i've said um but it's uh I've been playing that quite a bit. And there was one other one on my mobile thingy. Oh yes, it is actually on the list and it's called Warlight. Now this this looks awful. It yeah. looks, it's it's the most disgusting graphics I've seen in a mobile game ever. But it, it's it's another strategy game, but it's basically Risk. I found a, oh, right. a computer version of Risk. And Risk is awesome, uh, it's, you know, especially if you've got a few beers and a few mates around. Um, have you played Risk before to start off with? Do you know how to play it? I, I've never played it. Never played it. I've always wanted to, though. So, I mean, there's a few different ways to play Risk, but the classic game is essentially you are given armies and units. Um, and there's a lot more um, 
territories in this map that you can see here than there is in normal risk normally it's like north america south america europe uh eastern asia western asia and then australia and africa they're the, mm. they're the territories in the world or something like that i've got it downstairs but i've uh, again haven't played it for a while but you essentially deploy armies there's three different phases to the game you deploy armies i'm, de I'm describing the game that's on screen as well because it's yeah. essentially the same thing it's just not the official risk game um you deploy armies in each of your territories and then you have to send those armies to attack in the next phase and the reason it's called risk is that let's say for example you've got i've got four armies i can send to attack two armies on the other base mm -hmm. during my attack phase but you don't know what the other um the other people have deployed in those in those places so they may have deployed six armies there so you have sent five armies to attack six armies so you're not going to beat them so you will lose all of your armies or you will lose a percentage of your armies um it's a bit different on the board game than it is here it's all calculated based on um a lot of background stuff in yeah. the actual computer game but um yeah it's it's really really challenging it's it's an extremely difficult strategy game because the more territories you have the more difficult it is because let's say you've only got five armies to deploy yeah and you've got all of these territories in the middle of uh where am i at the moment what's that called russia asia asia i don't, know, I don't even know what that region of the world is called it's looking like Russia over there. Is it Indonesia? Oh, maybe not, actually. I think you might be right. I think it's Indonesia. Anyway, that area, if there are... Th at the moment, there's actually three people around me. You can't see one of them yet. They'll appear in a minute. Um, the blue army is someone else. I'm the green army. And the dark green army is someone else. And then there's another army that will appear in a minute. As they start encroaching on your space, and you've got more and more... Uh, more and more territories you have to distribute your five armies that you've got as support around on those units so if you've got three armies surrounding you you've got three t three times as much chance of losing your territories and it gets really really complicated games of real risk can last days they're ridiculous mm. <laughs> as complex as they get mm -hmm. um anyway, I, we're getting I, schooled in chat by the way just uh, about we, our geography <laughs> like, <laughs> How haven't you played Risk? All oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, but, at, but, least, at least what's back anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Most of Russia so, is in Asia. Yes. Uh, right. I'm awful. I'm awful with geography. It's, it's yeah, me one, too. Me too. <laughs> one of the worst things. I, I just roughly know that Sam moved south of me when he went to Cornwall. <laughs> went down a bit. Went down a bit, yeah. It's in I, uh, miles, but... I would. I can. I don't know what is. I can see this. I've got a still image of, of the map, um, so I don't really know which bit you're referring to at any given moment. So the, my the, feed's gone. There are three phases. There's a deploy phase. You deploy your armies where you think is the best place to deploy them, mm. with the vision that you're going to attack other places. Or are you going to defend your current territories? Uh, the second one is attack. And then you confirm what what you're doing, and you you essentially then watch the game play out in this game. In the real game, you have to manually move pieces around and draw cards, and there's all there's all kinds of extra rules and different ways of playing the a full game of Risk. But at least this is a. I mean, some of the games I've I've been I haven't actually beaten this map yet because it's insane. There's there's about mm -hmm. four armies plus yourself. You start off with one territory, and they've pretty much got the rest of the map already theirs. So you you you're all really up against the odds. There's another one where you can call reinforcements in, so you can get like 150 armies all plunked in one place or in different places, but you can only do that three times in the game. But the the rest of you know the, the other army has all of the map and you've just got england and you have to fight your way out of england it's it mm -hmm. it looks and plays like if you remember the old um this might be showing my age now because i'm not this old but uh, <laughs> my dad used to watch it um dad's army you know the beginning of dad's army yeah yeah where yeah the, the arrows used to push in it's basically that <laughs> that's, the, that's the animation <laughs> in this game <laughs> Um, <laughs> there you go, there's the Red Army showing up now. But anyway, yeah, it doesn't look particularly fun, but it's really mind-bending, you know, it's like... And can be really frustrating because when you've captured a region, you get more armies. So if I capture all of Russia, for example, I, I would get 5, 10, 15, 22, 22 armies there. So I'd get a full... Uh, then, and the problem is as soon as someone takes one of your... Um, one of your regions from Russia you'll lose six of those armies so you have to be careful about where you deploy things 
in defence and at the same time as where you're going to attack people and what territories you're going to try and take over. So it gets really, really complicated. Mm. But it's risk, as I said, risk, risk. If you haven't played it, get on it. <laughs> it's, it's a brilliant strategy game. For yeah, no, it looks good, game. man. I think I think I might check it out. Yeah, it's called uh, Warlight. It's got a subtitle as well, but Warlight, and it's on Android. I don't know if it's on iPhone or not, but okay, uh, cool. Check it out. Um, I said I've been playing a bit of Zombie U. Haven't got any footage of that. I've never actually shown any footage of that. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna let you go next, Leon. All right, so, cool. Sam's got anything else? Who are you? Nah, I've only. I've- I put 55 hours into Dark Souls in like two weeks and then started playing a bit good of Ratchet and Clank. Good so. man. That's impressive. That's good. Yeah, I'll leave <laughs> next then. So what else have you been playing at the mall, Leon? Uh, well, I mean, we've just had a, the PC port drop uh, for uh, Killer, Killer Instinct. And uh, for those that you don't know, it's a fighting video game. It's the third in the series. Uh, this time it's been developed by Double Helix Games. Uh, I think it, there was a few other studios in it as well. I think it was Iron Galaxy uh, Rare, uh, because they did it originally, and then uh, Microsoft Studios, uh, because they're the ones that uh, essentially uh, sort of published it. Hence why it's only out on PC and on the Xbox One. Uh, it's been out on Xbox One for a while now. It was kind of a flagship game and on the xbox one um where they actually gave it away for free and you got a free character as such right. now uh the good thing is is that if you're on windows 10 uh, you can do exactly the same kind of thing in the windows 10 store right now so i thought you know what i should give it a go <laughs> uh historically i've never been very good at beat em up games uh, it's not really my area sorry fighting video games so that kind of, but uh i did kind of play as a uh, jago at first because that was the first free character that you got and uh I, you know the it, it, it plays like sort of the old killer instinct games it's yeah. got you know and it's got your combo breakers your combos um, your combo ultras. Breaker. yeah exactly <laughs> you know ultra, it's ultra <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's got it's got all of those crazy noises that you you know that you love back in the day and uh yeah i mean uh yesterday uh, when i was playing it on the stream i was playing as a uh, mayor because that is now the free character because uh, it sort of rotates uh, sort of in and out and uh mayor is pretty cool character as well very easy to kind of do uh, combos with and you know i've been playing online as well uh like playing some rant games i mean i was getting my ass handed I was gonna to say, you, you probably would <laughs> oh i was i was but the, the cool thing is is that there is like combo assists as well so you can have that on and that kind of helps you with chaining your combo and stuff. It's like auto aim for, for yeah. fighter games. It's awful. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> it, but it's sort of the, the fact that it gives it more uh, playability for those people that aren't so you know hot on you know picking up those combos and everything like that it, it, it makes the game more accessible hmm. um which is you know a, a good thing at the end of the day because you know it means that there's going to be a lot more players uh, that you're going to come up against. I last time Sam came up to visit me, we got um, the SNES out and we oh, yeah. oh, nice. uh, Street Fighter Two. Oh, you know, the classic, the original Street Fighter Two, and um, I have I, I own it. It's my game. Sam <laughs> doesn't own it, and I don't think you've ever owned a SNES, have you? Nope. And he, well, I've played he, a lot of Street Fighter Two. You kicked the living shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think Chun Li, man. I think I won one or two <laughs> games possibly, but I was like, yeah, when I won them. But no, you just. <laughs> I'm rubbish at fighting games, but I used to play them to death when I was younger. I used to as well. I, I was a really big fan. A Street Fighter Two was one of those games that I didn't. I never could like. My family couldn't afford to get like loads of consoles when I was little, so we had a Mega Drive, and that was like the console. And so we're getting a Super Nintendo, which is not going to happen. Hmm. Uh, so whenever I went to a mate's house or a cousin's house, or whatever, who had one, it would always be Street Fighter 2 because that's like the game of that console that was the multi, the, the multiplayer like mm. game. So I wasn't, I'm not like very good at it, but I know enough of Chun Li's moves to like get by and the timing of them. But I used to play a shitload of Tekken, and I used to play a lot of Soul Calibur as well. So I have played some fighting games quite a lot, but not for a long time now. Like if I were to try and play Tekken online against somebody now i would get annihilated in like two seconds probably so this killer instinct but i used to be all right at Tekken. i remember orchid i remember her from mm. um she the green one the, the green woman yeah yeah like, mm-hmm. right, you're breaking up quite bad sam yeah. so we'll have to talk over you i think <laughs> oh yeah 
Oh, okay. So, I think uh, I think we've lost him. Oh no, he's there again. He is. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I I did play this a lot. I think again I had it on the SNES, um, mm. and I, I think it was one of them games that I rented, um, and I tried to hammer over we- you know various weekends for three ninety nine yeah. at a pop or something like that. Um, but I did. I played. I, I liked Inferno quite a lot. I can't remember playing as many other people. There was a guy with um, tomahawks in it as well, wasn't there? Mm. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't know any of their names because literally I've only got two playable characters. So uh-huh. literally, well, sorry, well, I've played as two. I know I've go, gone up against a few, but I never like kind of remember. I mean, I, I think I could think of one, maybe Gladius or Gla- Gladio or so. I don't know. It's some some close to that. Mm. That's about one other character I can think of. <laughs> it was like a werewolf guy or like a guy who's like a wolf man. I liked him whenever I played it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, on that kind of level, it's a really good PC port, though. It, it's it's been done really well. Uh, I I must admit, I'm using a, a, an Xbox 360 controller into in, into my PC. Works absolutely fine because obviously it's an Xbox yeah an Xbox One game. Um, and you know, you know, with all the PC ports lately, I was thinking, oh, maybe you know, like maybe they're going to cock it up because a lot of people are. But no bang on but it's to be expected it's you know with microsoft studios as well and the fact that it was on the xbox one and it was a kind of flagship game that they cut they they just knew that they couldn't screw it up on their windows 10 (laughs) but they did with quantum break really is that out yet it is and the reviews um because of how broken the pc version is uh, it's really bad but on the xbox one apparently it's running fantastic and it is a cool game very short but very very cool game right so i mean i heard about quantum break a long time ago now it's been being talked about for years mm. um and it is it just a xbox one exclusive or it's yes. xbox one and obviously it is on pc as on well PC now as well right yep. sorry and go on can you remind me what exactly it's about uh i'm just, I'm just trying to think now uh it, it's got a lot of sort of a it's, it's it looks like an action uh, a sort of action yeah. adventure kind of game where you're set in a, a a sort of a universe where you can kind of control time obviously not a very yeah. new kind of thing on that level but uh you're kind of playing uh, I, I i don't really know too much about the story as such but that i mean that's sort of core mechanics there but the more interesting thing about this game is that there is uh uh, like a, a mini series in some sense you're watching in between each level uh, right. that you're playing so it's sort of like a like a little 20 minute episode uh, of like live action uh yeah you're sort of like a tv kind of show kind of thing hmm, I so that's the that's the weird kind of thing about I'm it play a computer game not watch a film it's like if i want that i'll, I'll play metal gear you know yeah <laughs> yeah uh, with that hour and a half ending cutscene on metal yeah. gear solid 4 yeah jesus <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me we we, we were doing a, a playthrough of metal gear and we haven't finished it have we we still haven't f- and, and all and i say all that money that which money metal that, gear lou all of them we started oh, right. on, we started on metal oh, gear yeah. one we did two and three uh we haven't started four yet but essentially every death that i because i didn't play it like i normally play normally yeah. when i play and sam's the same we play metal gear games you reload or you you know if you 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 take ages to get through an area so you don't get caught or you don't get seen and you can like you know proper stealth it everywhere but with this game it was more of a if i get seen i have to deal with it i can't reload i can't you know and i'm not gonna spend ages crawling on my, on my belly everywhere so i just played it like a shooter essentially yeah. so not on purpose because i'm awful at it so <laughs> I, um, we played it all the way through but we, we were gonna do four as well and uh, we haven't yeah we just we just stopped. We were doing them on Monday nights, and they just started. To, like we got Battle Gear Solid Three took ages to finish because we kept not being able to finish it. Like we got through Battle Gear Solid One quite quick. Two was like starting to get a bit less regular, and three, the last few parts were like were really spaced out, weren't they? So we never got round to Battle Gear Solid Four because we couldn't like commit to the Monday nights thing. I think. Um, or, I think we might have to resurrect yeah. that. I'm still up for doing that because. I, I I thought that they were really good fun doing them because we basically got to have our cake and eat it too, which was having the cake was saying Metal Gear Solid is fucking brilliant, mm-hmm. and eating it too was going, but there's so much stupid crap 
to yeah, like, yeah. take the mick out of it. It's <laughs> but it's brilliant, yeah. There's so many terrible things in those games, but the games are so good that at the same time I still love them, but there's so much to criticise at the same time. I so just, we like... We I'd lampooned them. one of my favourites, so, though. Yeah. Mine too, mine too. I need to, has, I need to uh, play it again. It has really nice, slick gameplay, especially compared to the others. Yeah. Like the, the actual game feeling controls in Battle Against Line 4 are quite well done. Yeah. I think. PS3, isn't it? So I'll have to get everything set up again. Oh, God, it has those ridiculous loading screens of Snake smoking that cigarette. That's right. For like, for like half an hour while it installs. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we'll have to do those bits like off. Off camera, as it were, like do that bit, and then start like the record or the stream or whatever, because yeah. that's just ludicrous. That bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have <laughs> an hour of install before we. Start <laughs> so yeah, Metal Gear Solid Four is, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really look at the detail of that cigarette there. It's really good. <laughs> but the, the, we have a problem in that Lou promised that he was going to donate for every death that I, yes. I took. He was going to donate a pound to Child's Play Charity. So we've got a few donations. We haven't got loads. We think we've got about maybe about 15, 20 pounds worth of uh, public donations. But Lou, on top of that 20 pounds, now owes us, is it 30 or 60 pounds? Uh, you were, it, uh, that's mm-hmm. a good point. I, I've got a feeling it's closer to 60. No, I think it, I think we finished on 30 deaths. I think it might be exactly 30. 30. Yeah. Because I think we, we finished on 20 at the end. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. We've got it written down in a text file anyway because we, we had it on screen. But we'll, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to nudge him for the money even though he's, uh, he's not. And then anything else. I was, I was actually going to um, double it as well and I was going to add an extra, you know, for every... Because it's me who's dying. So I think yeah. I, owe, I owe something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll have to finish that anyway. We'll have to get, that, get on with that. Sorry. We, we digress. Digest. Digress. We do that mm-hmm. thing beginning with a D. Digress. You were right the first time. Yes. So, uh, Killer Instinct PC port. Good, bad. Enjoying it. Going to keep going with it. Yeah. No, I think I am, and I, I think I might invest in getting some characters for it. I mean, like you can pick up sort of different seasons as such um, to to get your sort of different character base. But you can kind of pick up a pack that's kind of got the lot that's out at the moment. Where I think it's sort of a, it is quite pricey. Mm. Uh, I mean, if you were to go for the, I think the ultimate is sort of around thirty. But if you think about it, if you're you're paying for the game because you haven't paid anything for it yet. So, um, but if you wanted to go individual seasons wise. I think they're sort of they're quite they're sort of around uh, sort of between 12 to 17 that's sort of kind of what I remember um, uh, sort of around that price point so you know it it is a little bit of money but if you just go you might as well just pay for the the whole hog (laughs) uh, Street Fighter 5 came out recently as well didn't it and that's that's quite popular with some of our friends have you had any visibility of that or have you played it I can't say I have no Uh, a lot of people are raving about it it's Mm apparently quite good in fact mm. one or two of my friends that's all they're playing and it's been out qu- for quite a while now so yeah came out a few weeks ago i believe yeah is it only a few weeks right i think it's quite recent it, it is this year i just think oh, it's yeah. not it's like a couple of months ago maybe i don't think it's that i think it's quite new still mm. Mm, fair enough i think okay wrong. so moving on to the last game hopefully i think I think yeah. my, my last one is the last game. Um, this is a game I have played other games or in the franchise of. Um, it's another cyberpunk kind of stealth them up, and my screen's just went all black. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, there we go, okay. Um, and it's called uh, Shadowrun, which you've probably heard of. Uh, Shadowrun was a, it's a tabletop like role playing game. Um, Set you know set in a kind of cyberpunk universe uh, with it's kind of got some fantasy elves orcs and kind of ghosts and spirits and kind of things in there as well but there's also the all the technology you know cyber cyberspace and they're called it's called the matrix in uh, in this and it's um deckers and riggers and people who, who control drones and that kind of thing and the original game i think it was the original game on the snes I played to death when I was a kid, and when they decided to re-release it, uh, there's a company called Hairbrain Schemes, they decided to not re-release the original, but release another game in the franchise. The, they did it a few years ago, and it was just called Shadowrun. Retur- oh, it was called Shadowrun Returns, I think. They also released another one, Shadowrun... 
Legends or something. I can't remember the exact name of it. But this is the third one in this uh, in this particular franchise. The the only thing with this game is, if you enjoy the Shadowrun universe, you'll enjoy the game because mm-hmm. it is tons of text. Essentially, mm-hmm. especially at the start of the game, there's very little doing anything, and there's loads of reading and there's loads of dialogue options and uh, I've actually opened up the main quest now in that I'm starting to do shadow runs a shadow runner is somebody who does contracts for money basically in this world Uh, you start off as a kind of a legitimate uh, person one of your friends is a cop in this game but something happens shit goes down your name gets basically uh, an APB gets put out for you for nothing that you've done but it's it's a load of conspiracy stuff that's going on and um, essentially you become an outlaw and then you end up shadow running so that's the premise of this game but there's a lot more to it and the story is very very deep and very in depth the game looks really nice as well I mean it is, it's solid isometric kind of straight mm. down uh, game the, everything's low poly uh, it's all really low uh, low quality kind of graphics if you get close but you generally you're quite far out the combat is turn based as well and uh, you essentially upgrade your character with karma points so the dialogue options tend to do more or what you say for example you you come across a fight scene or, or a scene that may turn into a fight basically what you choose in the dialogue depends on if you're going to go into a turn-based combat or not and depending on what you do in the dialogue depends on how much karma you get at the end of the battle and the karma is your upgrade points so it's uh, it's a slightly different way of working with it but it's really cool in that there's loads of different weapons and loads of different skills and also when you I, ch- I usually choose deckers in this game which are hackers essentially and the deckers can jack into the matrix and the matrix mm. is this other kind of alternate world and let me see if i can find some footage of it uh probably going to be quite far into this i think we're familiar with the concept of the matrix at this point well no it's not the same matrix. this is actually around before the matrix even came out the film but um not the game but the the concept of the matrix within the uh, Shadowrun universe has yeah. been around since well well before that. They've they've upgraded it in this game. So what the Matrix is, is essentially you have an avatar inside the computer world, and uh, you move from you, you move from room to room to get to nodes within the Matrix. But you've got programs and uh, expert programs that you use within the Matrix, which you buy and install on your deck within the main world from merchants and smugglers and things like that uh, and they help you inside the matrix so you it, all they are are different kind of spells essentially but they it, 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 you know you can choose before you go into each matrix session what to take in with you so again you can you can try and stealth your way around things but they've, they've, they've actually upgraded it quite a lot previously it was just a case of you come across uh, an enemy or an ic within the uh, which is a another program inside the matrix mm-hmm. and you fight it and you only fight everybody in that room whereas with this one they seem to have these kind of guard programs that run around or guard enemies i say programs because that's what they call them but it, they're just enemies yeah. and they'll um if you get in their line of sight then it increases your uh what's it called it increases your kind of threat rating within the matrix or your uh the, the uh, eventually it gets to 100 percent, and you then they send out loads of guards to attack you essentially or loads of other programs it's, <laughs> it's all about the law it's all about the, the the world and getting involved in it and i said if you're not into the concept of shadow run it really wouldn't make sense to you i think it's one of those games that you you need you need to have patience with because it's all about the story more than the gameplay if you know what i mean but the gameplay i still quite enjoy because it's turn-based strategy so that makes that makes it fun to me but i i love it this is all the the new hacking stuff it's all totally different so mm, cool um but you, yeah yeah you, you this weird kind of avatar that floats around of yourself um but anyway yes right i'm wittering on i feel like i'm i'm definitely wittering with this one I, I know it looks cool man no i i'm because the thing is i've never really tried the shadow run games before so and I've, dave has kind of one of my other podcast guys he's he's told me about it in the past as well and i've i've always been intrigued by it and now seeing the footage i'm like oh yeah maybe i should check it out it's it the, the only thing i can say and the only criticism i have is that it is a lot of reading it's like reading mm. um you know like the old action books whatever they were called uh 
turn a you know turn to page 43 if you want to do this turn to page it's that kind of yeah. thing but in computer game format um but i've always that's always appealed to me and i love the shadow run universe i love the mm. there's so many concepts that it's taken from all the cyberpunk kind of novels throughout the years you know it's mm. it's got a thing called btls called better than life chips uh, which comes yeah. not not directly from uh, red dwarf but red dwarf actually takes it from um what's it called uh neuromancer the oh uh, yeah william gibson novel um but this this again it has all that kind of law built into it and i don't know it's just really it's really cool for me as someone who's a fan of the series i've never played the, the desktop game the the tabletop game but i've I've always i've played the computer game when i was a kid and i loved it it was absolutely brilliant it was really dark as well and as a, a 10 year old kid it was like i shouldn't really be playing this this is definitely an 18. there's, <laughs> there's lots of murder and espionage and kind of nasty horrible conspiracy theories going on and like you know mega corps are evil it's brilliant i love yeah. it i love the the whole concept of it but anyway yes moving on moving on so are we out of games i think we are i believe so yes wow. Well, we've got, we've got half an hour to talk about the droves of news that we've actually got to talk about this uh, this week. Uh, we can do it. A lot of it's Nintendo anyway. We can put it in all in one. Yes. <laughs> what, what, I was just going to say, this is a very, very he Nintendo-heavy session, so I'm sorry, Sam. I know yeah. you're not a massive Nintendo fan or guy. Um, are, you, are you into your Nintendo, Leon? I've got my N64 set up right next to me uh, cool. with GoldenEye in there ready to play. <laughs> <laughs> is that it though? Is that your extent of your Nintendo knowledge? Have you, have you had other consoles? In a, uh, uh, I have had like the Wii and uh, definitely uh, massively on the handheld market. I had like the Game Boy Advance, SP, whatever, 3DS, the lot. I've, I've had the lot. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's a daft question to ask, are you aware of, you know, the Nintendo world? But some strangely, people like, like, Lou and even Sam to an extent that the because they didn't have Nintendo's you weren't you're not that into it are you? you've never really yeah. got into Mario no, I, for example and never really got into Mario um I played the Ocarina of Time when that came out and I actually again saw it at somebody else's house and was like I have to have this in my life because it was that at, at, at its time of its time as well it was it mm. blew every other game out of the water just by oh, the, yeah. like even from Mario 64 the jump from that to Zelda felt massive in terms of like Mario 64 is a load of like random crap basically yeah. to be fair to the game that's what it is, it is? whereas Zelda's like a world like it's a, a whole continuous world that is all connected um, so yeah I, I got an affection for the Nintendo 64 and I played quite a lot of GameCube games and a little bit of the Wii but not at it really and I quite like the SNES in terms of there's a lot of good games on there but I never really had that much of a Nintendo thing but there's a few things on Nintendo that I adore particularly Zelda. Sorry. I mean, uh, if I was going back in those days, I mean, I definitely was more of a Sega kind of man. I had, like, the, the Mega Drive, the Master System, all that kind of... I, I, I never really had, like, the SNES or anything like that, but I definitely went around friends and played games on the SNES, mm. for sure. I um, I got... I fell in love with the SNES uh, Super... I had a NES anyway, but I fell in love with the SNES because my dad's girlfriend's next door neighbor had super mario world and it was oh. it was amazing to me it was like i'd come from a commodore 64 at this point pretty much mm -hmm. i'd played on nez a little bit i think in fact i'm not even sure if i had one then but um he i played on his and i was like i've got to have one of these this is the best thing i've ever played in my entire life <laughs> it's so colorful and looks so good and even now i still think that game that console is one of the best kind of 16-bit era oh yeah they, they, to me. They, they, the, end, the SNES games hold up for for that aesthetic that they were going for. They still are pleasing to the eye. Like the old Mario games on the SNES and Link to the Past, they still are nice looking games. Mm. They still have a nice mm. design. Their colours are nice. It's all put together really like a really solid like way. It's not flimsy or or like shitty like a lot of games from that era feel a bit sort of scrappy. Whereas yeah. a lot of those SNES games feel really good and like solid and well put together. And then I was I was lucky enough when I got a little bit older that my cousin had an N sixty four, and I remember he brought it round at Christmas one year for me to play uh, while he was visiting me and my mum, and he gave it to me for Christmas, and I was like, Jeez. oh my god, I've got Mario sixty four now, and that was <laughs> so that's why I'm in love with Nintendo still. And mm. but anyway, so the Nintendo news is a bit disheartening, but also a little bit kind of see it coming. 
Um, mm. There's a lot of the, they've recently released quite a few press statements and they've released things like financial records that have uh, they've uh, or the financial statements I think for the year. So let's start with the financial statements. Not particularly interesting, but essentially we've been talking about the Wii U for a while, and the Wii U has not done as well. <laughs> yeah. Now I I re I've got a Wii U. My my wife bought me one for Christmas last year, and I'm I love it. I think it is a wonderful console, and I'm amazed it hasn't done better than it does has done. I don't really understand why um, it's not even done as well as the Xbox One. No, I, but I think uh, for, for me, the reason why I haven't picked it up is that I, I just don't feel like there is an amazing title base on that kind of game in general. I mean, don't get me wrong, they've got their usual IPs, but there's just not much more than that, and I, I think agree. that's the problem with it. There I isn't agree. that like that big that big like that big console seller. Like, for example, the N64 had Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, um, Lilith Wars. Was that the the Star Fox yep. game? Like these games came out, uh, and it was like you you want to buy a console to play this. Like that's how good that those games felt like they were leaping ahead. It was like this is the new. The new generation and then you had um even the wii had it's like this is motion control this is like this really new thing everyone went out and bought shitloads of them you know the gamecube has was basically the same as the n64 but better graphics it was more like a slightly more powerful xbox or ps2 and that did pretty well so but let's the let's, wii let's talk about some figures quickly so the wii has sold 101 million units now that's, that's versus. I mean, I think the PlayStation Two is the only console that's ever outdone that, and that was two hundred odd million, I believe, mm -hmm. something like that. I might be getting my figures wrong, so I apologise. But I know the PlayStation Two did very, very well. The 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 Wii U so far, and I know it's not had the lifespan of the Wii, but it sold twelve point eight million. The PS4 has sold thirty six million, and the Xbox One, even though they haven't published figures, people think it's roughly around eighteen million, which is still more than the Wii U. So the Wii mm -hmm. U is essentially even by other console standards has flunked generally mm. nintendo yeah. most of the time sell more consoles than any other provider because they have a much more uh much cheaper consoles and they have a bigger market because they look for families more than anything they look for families yeah. and kids yeah. and you know they go for that kind of pc type audience whereas gaming now has evolved to a point where it's not just geeks in a bedroom playing on the PCs anymore. It is everybody on the planet has a Xbox or a PlayStation in the front room. Either if, even if it's just for a blue ray drive, you know, or mm. something, because it's a cheap, it was a, a cheap blu ray player, a PS3 yeah. initially, wasn't it? Um, yeah. But it's got to a point now where Nintendo, even though they still innovate, they've got to a point where they're maybe starting to lag behind with all of this. Mm. So... I was waiting for the Wii U. I, I wasn't going to get a Wii U um, until the Zelda game came out because I could I could take a leave the the new Mario games. I got Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers U, I think it's called, mm. um, f with my console. And I've also got uh, my wife bought me for my birthday actually um, Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Ah, um, nice. And I also I also picked up an old copy of Zombie U. Um, for like seven quid or something and I'm glad I did because it's brilliant it's shit scary but it's brilliant um, <laughs> and all of the games I've got for it are brilliant apart from Super Mario 3D World which I think is a little bit I've completed it and it's not great it's just a little bit I didn't it, I was expecting Super Mario 64 and it wasn't and it isn't it's it's more of a 2D game 2.5D game with you can change the camera angle sometimes when they want to let you you know it's it doesn't feel like a 3D game but it says 3D world in the title i expected more from it you know <laughs> so as i said they they we just talked about figures there but the Wii U um they've also said that they're probably going to be finishing production of it um I think by march was it march 2018 which is yeah. short short cycle that is i mean there was like there was rumors that it was going to be earlier than that but i i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on that kind of so thing. i mean i haven't got their financial figures but apparently they i haven't I haven't looked at them oh no i have i've got them here sorry i thought i, I thought it was in one of the yeah. articles but um, their profits are down this year 61 percent from next 61 percent from last year last year what? they made 16.5 billion yen sorry 41.8 billion yen this year they made 16.5 billion yen that's about 149 million us dollars um 
the company had anticipated this year that they'd make 17 billion, so it's roughly what they anticipated, 500 million less. So their profits are down considerably. They've just mm. announced that potentially they're going to close, said that stop production of the Wii U in 2018 and they've also announced that their nx console is coming out as of march 2017 so that means that they're essentially going nope the wii u's not doing very well we've had enough we throw yeah. we're throwing the towel in i i'm i'm shocked i have to say i mean it's not a f i mean they've still made a profit they just haven't made as much profit and i think by corporate standards that's a failure isn't it yeah and um, but i mean because at the end of the day a lot of you know third party developers don't even want to develop for it because they've lost well i mean they can clearly see that nintendo had lost faith in the device in the first place and the fact mm -hmm. that the consumer base as well uh, had um so i mean it's a big shame because yeah i mean you're right it, it is it is a pretty you know nifty device and that kind of i mean i i played it with uh, one of my old hosts before dean uh, i I, I went around there and played some like uh, mario kart you know a few other games on it as well but uh, you know it, it is it is a really nice device it is they've they've done a really good job with it but it's just it doesn't quite compete with you know our, the this generation that we've got now you know that graphically wise i mean don't get me wrong i know nintendo haven't always been you know at the maybe the forefront of the of the graphics kind of wise because obviously they're more into their innovation you know with their move controls and, and you know and, and their handheld devices but I, I don't know, they've really kind of, they dro they dropped the ball with the Wii U a little bit, and uh, I think they're like, right, we need to hurry up and get this NX console out, but to, to, to not say anything at E3 2016, I think is going to be a big mistake for them. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they're not, they haven't even got any games. Uh, no, no, they have. They've got one game in mm. 2016, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, which is they announced today that the new Zelda game, finally we have an announcement to say when it's coming out it's been delayed until next year, 2017 and it's going to come out simultaneously on the Wii U and the NX so it means we have to wait for the NX to release date, properly yep. you know, the full you... release date, until we know when Zelda's going to come out. But didn't that lead me to think, well, it, how we don't know what the specs are for the NX, so it's like well, how much of a, of a what's the difference really with the NX and the Wii U, what is the yeah. What is it they're going to change? Yeah, I think the, it's the other odd thing. On both. Yeah. I mean, the other odd thing is that the fact that, you know, we're, we've got a release window and we know nothing about the console yet. This is so unusual. Usually mm. we know so much more mm. about the actual device, what games are going to come out, and then they're like, bam, there's the release date. They're doing things in a very odd order here, and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I, I feel a bit, I feel a bit like... I don't like to be negative about about these kind of things, but it feels negative to me as a, as a consumer. Um, and I've been a Nintendo, I wouldn't say fanboy, but I've been a fan since I was a kid. And they've always innovated and they've always done things uh, in, a, in a, at least, they've always been interesting with their releases and the con new consoles. And I'm not sure how NX, because we don't know anything about it, is going to be any better than the Wii U considering i think the wii u is quite good you know mm -hmm. what i mean I, it's just as you said i think the problem with the wii u is that it doesn't have enough games it doesn't have enough um enough draw on it i think mm. I mean, they, they, strangely enough that they've just released the new i think the new Star Fox game for it which has been for amongst fans who've not had one for like two consoles now a proper Star Fox game has that been a quite a big thing because i think the last one was on the gamecube if i'm right so there wasn't there wasn't a star fox game on the wii and i don't even yeah. know if there was a proper one on the, on the game i think there was a, i think there was one on the gamecube but that's like one of their that that became one of their like big franchises and they didn't even do one so this has been like a long time waiting and it's probably going to be a amongst wii u uh fans it's probably going to be a pretty big hit as well like it looks cool i've seen the trailer for it i was like i kind of want to play that like, it looks pretty damn entertaining so it's weird because you th I, I was thinking about this when you said about them stopping production it almost feels like wouldn't they be better off than stopping production like start releasing more killer like stuff for it like start supporting it go look at these fucking mint games we've got coming out don't you want to buy this console because ultimately that's what sells them like you know yeah. 
buy a console for the having a Netflix capability or the fact that you can watch the BBC iPlayer. No, that's just extra crap. If it's got good games on it, people will go to it. And Nintendo has often had a good record of saying, you can't get these... Nintendo make games like nobody else does come and buy our consoles to play these games. Mm. I think these days as well, one of the things um, that's important to consumers is the online capability and the, mm. the way that it works. I know mm. that when the PS, the last gen of consoles, the, the 360 and the, the PS3, I know I preferred the 360. I've got both consoles, and the 360 had a better online capability in general. Definitely. Even, even when they upgraded it, uh, upgraded the, the XPM, well, not XPMC, sorry, the, the, the dashboard, and it, mm. and it, it, was, it moved to them tiles and, uh, and mm. all that. It still felt better than the PS3 ever did. The PS4 this year, I haven't actually seen an Xbox One, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. Um, but the, the PS4 feels like it's matured to a point where it's it feels like a decent experience online. And I think the Wii U, my opinion of that is it all feels very disconnected, very much like the old PS3 did. It doesn't, mm. even though there's this Miiverse that they've got, you can, yeah. every game has a cap capability of, most of them you can collect stamps in it, so you can use the stamps to create messages and little icons, and usually it's just big massive cocks everywhere, and <laughs> uh, Peach, Peach getting bummed by Toad, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's daft. <laughs> but it's still fun to do that, and to read people's comments and stuff, and I enjoy some of the Miiverse stuff, but it's still the whole online shop. When I've been on the online shop, there are essentially four games for the for the Wii U that are any good. Xenoblade Chronicles X, which looks like it's actually going to be quite a lot of fun when I do get around to getting it, which is a huge RPG. That's be good. Um, Super Mario Brothers U, Wii U. There's a few old, you know, backward compatible titles as well, such as the old Zelda games and old Mario games. Um... What was the other one? I mentioned a few that I've got. The, the new Zelda game, which is a HD remake of an old Zelda game, which has been remade from the GameCube to the Wii to the Wii U. And that's it, really. There's mm. nothing else that that I can I can see works for the Wii. That, that's, I was waiting for the new Zelda game before I bought the console, and now we're not going to need to do that. So maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they, they're doing it, because everybody's waiting for the new Zelda game to buy a Wii U. <laughs> And so, well, when they released that first teaser of the Zelda, everyone, went, myself, went ape shit about it because yeah. it was like this. This is a news. This is like that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You want that where it's like this is an entirely new mm. Zelda experience. This is so much bigger and looks so much more intricate than what we've seen before. I want it now. And <laughs> you know, if they release that as like this is how we're going to sell the NX with this game, then the NX will sell like fucking hotcake probably. Because I'll probably buy one if that game is as good as it, it looked in that teaser trailer they released, like just like a year and a half ago now, two years ago that they released that teaser trailer. So it was quite a while ago. Mm, See, I'm, now, I'm now in a situation where I've got a Wii U, and I don't know if I should get an NX just for this new game. Normally, mm. I'm okay with that, but I don't know if I trust Nintendo now. Mm. So I'm yeah a bit lost with it. Anyway, so let's get a shifty on because we're nearly uh, we're nearly on the two hours. Um, we are, we are. Nintendo have also brought our humble bundle, which has got something to do with all of these press releases they're doing at the moment. It's got to be. It's like something like one hundred and fifty dollars worth of Nintendo games for the Advance and for the Wii U. I don't know how it works, so it can't be physical copies. So it must all be download links. So yeah, I think it is. It's got to be. Um, mm. I, it, to be fair, none of the games appeal to me on there. They said there's only one other game that I don't have for the Wii U, which is Xenoblade, Cl Xenoblade Cl Chronicles X that I want to get. Um, okay, so we have a, a, a news article say about Dark Souls being over. Yeah. Um, so basically, they, they, they're talking about the FromSoft. Um, are working on a new IP, and apparently um, one of the spokespeople, I don't know if it was um, Miyazaki himself, but basically said, we don't have any intention of going back to Dark Souls, Dark Souls is over. And that's what the article says, basically, that's just to sum it up. Um, which I, I, I'm actually quite happy with, that because they've done quite a lot with this kind of game, and I feel like Dark Souls 3, there's not really any massive innovations in it, it's just really good it's the same thing, but more of it, and it's like it's really good, but there's nothing like 
super interesting or innovative. So rather than just churning them out and being like, oh, we'll give you a, a sword that uh, has lightning and fire together, there you go. They're just going, oh, we're done, we're going to do something else. I'm quite glad. And the, the third game feels like it's the capping off the end of a whole... Because it's sort of like a little genre unto itself, Dark Souls. Mm. They play quite unlike any other game, really. Uh, Bloodborne and Demon Souls play like them, but they're not quite the same. So that whole thing that they that FromSoft have done, they're putting a cap on it, and I'm like, I'm quite happy with that actually. I think that's okay. I'd rather more developers did that actually than just churning them out over and say, over and over it's again. A, it's a bold move. The, yeah. A lot of the time, this is why we have. This is why I have problems with uh, Ubisoft. Because they just keep churning games out of the yep. same franchise and same IPs. Fair enough, they've got a lot of IPs, but they've been ar around a long time as well. Um, but they just keep giving us sequels that do the same thing over and over and over again. And they're never going to stop. And Yep, just keep riding that cash cow. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> this year, them, actually, I think this year, there's a first year since uh, they released it, that they're actually skipping a year on Assassin's Creed. They are, they are. Because the last one, I think it was Unity, wasn't it? Apparently it was so full of bugs. I mean, not that all of them other ones haven't been so full of fucking bugs anyway, but... <laughs> the, the, Unity was bad, yeah, for yeah, bugs. I, I've never played it because I've, I've gave up after three. I bought four knowing that it was a different type of game, you know, pirates, and it was yeah. actually quite cool for... After three, I said to myself, that's it, I've had enough. I've had enough of your shit, Ubisoft. Yeah. It's... Yeah. it's <laughs> I, I hated that game. I really hated that game. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I'm, I think it's a bold move, and I think it's it's good that they're doing a new IP. I, I'm no problem with that whatsoever. Even though I, I'm not a Dark Souls guy, but you know, I, it's it's brave, and I'm, I'm sometimes I'm amazed that um, publishers allow people to do that because it's easy to go, as you said, the whole cash cow thing and just keep going with the same IP. I'd, I'd rather that a good developer is allowed to stretch their like creative legs a bit and say, well, we've done this thing, let's do something else, see what we can do with that. Mm. I'd, I'd much rather more developers did that. It'd be, mm. Gaming would be a more interesting like environment if that was the case. For sure. Okay, so, yeah. um, Hitman Episode 1, Paris, has been released. Uh, it was released a while back now, actually, I think. Was it a while, or...? I think it's been a little bit now, but we've got episode two uh, that's just sort of uh, dropped on the PS4. I can't even remember where the area is. But <laughs> so, um, it's the, the one thing that was interesting here is that they've been doing, um, Square Enix have been doing a hell of a lot of marketing for Hitman. Um, I've seen a lot of um, supplementals with all of my PlayStation magazines. I've been getting things that you can, you could buy merchandise three months ago before it came out. You can, uh, there's been doing a lot of interviews and a lot of kind of feature articles about it. I've even seen TV adverts and, you know, adverts. Have you seen the, uh, have you seen the, the, the video that they did with the Chuckle Brothers? Nope. What? Oh, it's on, it's on YouTube. Yeah, you, you're going to have to check it out at some point. It is absolutely oh, well. hilarious. It's the Chuckle Brothers are basically trying to guide the hitman through the thing. Because they're, they're like in, yeah, uh, you know, they're like, like we are right now in front of a, a monitor kind of thing. And they're sort of speaking to him and sort of going, oh yeah, no, yeah, go, oh yeah, kill him. <laughs> but it's, it's the Chuckle Brothers do it. It's, it honestly is brilliant. Check it out. I've got it, I've got it ready to play once we've stopped to the, uh, <laughs> the content tagged if I play it on the, the show. So I'll, yeah, I think so you're probably right, right yeah. <laughs> but the thing that was interesting to me is I, I wasn't aware that it was um, going to be episodic. I played the last game, Absolution. I played one and two as well briefly, and I know you did, Sam. I know you were a fan of the old Hitman games. Um, I played Absolution. I was all right with it, but it got slated, didn't it, Absolution? Um, but this new one, I don't, why have they went to an episodic thing? Because apparently the first one's eleven ninety nine, and then the rest of them are all going to be seven ninety nine to buy. And there's, I think it it's works out about fifty or sixty quid in all, fifty five, sixty quid it works out at, which is about the but same as the full game. Is Square Enix uh, really liking that kind of thing at the moment? Just mm -hmm. because they did the thing with uh, Life is Strange, uh, sort of episodic. Yeah. You know, now that they've announced, you know, with the Final Fantasy VII remake, yeah, and that's going to be episodic. Uh, and, you know, we've got the Hitman, you know, as well, uh, episodic now as well. So it's very much their thing at the moment because Life is Strange did 
amazingly well and and that's why they're like you know what we're gonna keep on this model <laughs> but i waited until mm. life is strange was all finished and done and dusted before i bought the pack and i got mm. a, that's what very, i'm thinking of doing i got a very good <laughs> yeah. discount on it as well it was next yeah. to nothing in fact when i got it um and i'm playing through it at the moment i think i'm still on episode one actually because i um got distracted by fallout 4 i think i think <laughs> after i bought it but yeah i mean i'm not sure i like it I'd, I'd still still rather be in a position where I've got a full game to play. I'm, I'm I agree. playing games. I'm not watching Game of Thrones. You know, I'm I'm playing a game that should have an ending to it, and I don't want to have to exactly. wait until the next. Day. I mean, things like The Walking Dead. Um, yeah, The Walking Dead by Telltale. That worked episodically because it was it was more story based than gameplay based. But if you're playing a game like Hitman, which I imagine it's got a story in it, of course, in fact, quite yeah. an elaborate story, but it's most of it is gameplay. I assume it's heavily heavy, it, the old Hitman games were heavily gameplay. It was yeah. about here's an environment, find all the unique ways you can do to get this mission done. Hmm. So, so it's. It doesn't, doesn't quite minimal. To me, I don't want to be waiting. I just don't. It's just greediness. I think it's just a a new a new sales model that works for people at the moment. And I'm mm. hoping that developers will not developers consumers will revolt against it at some point. Yeah, Easy. I think that it's 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 a it's a sales model that they've gone. Life is strange, and The Walking Dead work that way. Yeah, but don't apply it to every. It doesn't mean do it with every game. The kind of games that it makes sense to do it with. Yes, don't do it. Like I still think the Final Fantasy VII things are weird. I'm not even a fan of that game, and I think that's a misstep. Like, it's a weird choice to make for an open world RPG to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I. Well, I'm a massive Final Fantasy fan. Same. It's like Final Fantasy VII is is my game. I love that game too much. I'm actually learning to speedrun it at the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, it, that's why I'm sort of like, oh, why are you doing this to me, Square Enix? Why are you doing it to me? Because, like, uh, uh, they have kind of spoke out uh, against it, though, to say, like, hey, look, you know, this first episode, that's going to be the whole of Midgar. Midgar. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay but what are the other parts going to be? Are you going to be able to, you know, go back to their, you know, because uh, they're not going to put everything in as well. They've already said that. that there is going to be certain things that are going to be missed because they, they're they trying to bring it up to these sort of modern times with their action-based kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, do I want this? Do I want this? I've been shouting that I've wanted this for a mm -hmm. long time, but it's not the game that I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. They're, they're still working on it. It could be good. It looks amazing. From the footage I've seen, it looks like I'm going to really enjoy it, but um, the jury's out for me. And mm. I will... I will buy it. It feels like I'm buying DLC, I will. though. It feels I will. Dirty. I totally will as well. It feels I very dirty. But too much of first, a fanboy. If the first episode doesn't cut it for me, and it doesn't fulfil... If it makes... If it leaves me feeling wanting... I will not fall into that trap of buying the next 20 episodes because that's how many episodes they're going to need to fill yeah. that entire game. For sure. There's there's no way that they couldn't release a, a game with a huge download or they keep saying they wouldn't be able to fit it all in one release and that's such a load of bollocks. Yep. It's it's a marketing thing. It's because they don't it want is. the risk. That's all it is. How, you know, that's how it. big is, is a game like The Witcher 3? or like How many massive fucking games have we had in these past couple of console generations, no, it's ludicrous. The Final Fantasy, because of all of the scenes, all of the pre-rendered backgrounds, is going to be the biggest game ever made. If it's in all fully rendered, it's fully rendered three D back, three D worlds rather. It's it will be immensely huge. There's so much to that game. If if you haven't played it that much, Sam, there's, mm. I mean, three CDs of essentially JPEGs. And a yeah. few a few models is is a huge amount of data back back then, and it's just going to be it. it's going to be massive. I understand that, but I don't I can't forgive them for that. I can't forgive them for for using or trying to dupe fans that are now all in the thirties that understand that corporations are always trying to make more money. Yeah. into trying to make us think oh right it might be alright oh they're doing that for a good reason oh they're going to give us more content then if they do this no they're just being fucking greedy bastards that's what it they is are. they are and they're minimising risk which 
again, I understand as a, a, an adult that works in an environment where it's constantly under, you know, work is always under, right, there's all these cost centers and you've got to, you've got to make sure you save money everywhere you can, you know, I understand that, but it's still annoying as a gamer, <laughs> I can't yeah. have it all right now. Yeah. Oh, right, rant over. Okay, <laughs> few, let's let's run through the, the last few things because we are five minutes Wait, over now. Yep. Okay. Um, Fallout 4 mod support is now in place in the latest beta on Steam, which is great because we've been waiting for it and that means that we'll start getting some more rich user-generated user content. Um, I am this close to re either restarting my game entirely and start. I'm, I want to try the survivor mode in, in Fallout 4 because um, mm. it sounds like it might make the game a lot more difficult and more interesting. Um, but yeah, the, the latest beta will have these releases, which means that I will start. We'll start being able to customize our um, our GUIs and start being able to customize how settlements work and optimize all kinds of things inside the game on the PC, which mm -hmm. will make it a better experience than Bethesda even initially made it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy about that. PS uh, Xbox mod support's coming in May, and the PS4 is coming in June. So you have to wait longer than all of us, Sam, unfortunately. But I don't even know oh, what fine. you're going to get yet. Nobody's got visibility of how it's going to look on the consoles. Okay. Excuse me. Um, apparently, Uncharted Four, even though the release date, tenth of May, is May, is yeah. already has already been dispatched to some people. It has. It has a... slipped out. It's a fuck up though, because the people that have got it have said that the uh, trophy, um, what's the word? The trophy sink wasn't work, so you can't like oh. turn your trophies on. You can't. Uh, they, like it's not it's not ready. They've not released it, so you can't play the multiplayer. There's a few things in the game that the functions that don't work, but it's like well, it's but the not supposed to be out yet. Works fine. I'm not sure if the no, full single play. All right. To be fair, that's all I was going to buy Uncharted 4 for. I don't exactly. care about the crap. I still, I've still got <laughs> Uncharted 2 and 3, I think, in the cellophane downstairs, because I played your one and then bought it cheap somewhere. And I just can't be asked. Just cannot be asked <laughs> with that game. Why'd yeah. you buy 2 and 3, then? Because I'm a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really like this game. I don't really like this game. I best buy the next two in the franchise just to confirm that I don't like it. <laughs> I got them because I think I saw them again cheap, and I went through a stage in my life where everything i was like a little blackbird and i was buying every game that i could possibly get my sweaty little mitts on <laughs> uh, uh Border borderlands 3 is being developed which is good news for uh, for lou might get back into gaming because he loves borderlands um i will probably have a go with him and complain that it's the same old fucking shoot people in the face and upgrade your gun loot over shoot and over and over. yeah um it's basically it's basically a diablo 3 in first person <laughs> um and that's it, really. There's a few other articles, but I'm not even going to mention them because they're not that interesting. So, have you got anything else to say, Leon, before we sign off? Well, I suppose I could kind of pimp myself out a little bit on the uh, the old game over the air front. Uh, so, it. on that kind of level, uh, definitely follow us on Twitch. Uh, we've got a podcast coming up on uh, May the 2nd at uh, half eight. Uh, we're going to be starting. Um, so, you can grab us at Twitch, uh, at, you know, at Go over the air. Uh, so it's G over yeah. Um, we've also got a YouTube channel which is forward slash user game over yeah UK, a uh, Twitter at Go over yeah, and our, our Facebook page um, is uh, Game over yeah also. So definitely go and uh, give, follow us. Go on, go on, give us a follow. Go on, the, <laughs> the lovely guys. I've been on the podcast before and uh, it was it was thoroughly enjoyable. And uh, yes, get on it. Get on it, guys. So yes, same for us. You can follow us on everything at Resonance Arcade. It's all that's that's it. We're, we're the same on everything. So um, we weren't that lucky, unfortunately. We no, weren't that lucky. No. <laughs> we, we spent a long time trying to find a name that we all liked. It worked, and it was free everywhere. Um, <laughs> a bit too long, <laughs> some would say. <laughs> anyway, thank you for those who have been in chat today: Stag Beetle, Potato, and billions of other people. I'm sure. Um, and we'll catch you next time we're on, people. See you later. Bye-bye.